Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Icebound. We would absolutely love it if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. If you'd like to support the stream, you can do so by checking out our merch shop, of which we are going to have a very special limited edition merch run coming very soon. You can become a patron over on Patreon, especially at the Pearl Dolphin tier or higher, where you can enjoy our Patreon exclusive campaign called Shroud Over Salt Marsh, and go to thecrookedmoon.com today to pre-order your copy of The Crooked Moon. Thank you. We are Legends of Avantris. This is Icebound. Lend us your strength and join us. An ancient behemoth of speed accelerates and collides with a massive wooden gate at the end of its path and the world erupts into chaos. The air, biting and cold, is suddenly filled with a cacophony of splintering wood, shattering ice, and the sudden startled cries of the creatures on the other side. Bright morning light blinds you momentarily as you hurtle uncontrollably into and through a bustling market. Around you, structures of dark timber and fur-lined pavilions sail past you. Those in your path are quickly demolished and their contents, a riot of colors and smells, scatter in the wake of your passage. The faces of those you pass are a blur of shock and dismay at the spectacle you've become. The sledge booms forward, unyielding. You plow through the heart of this market, smashing through stalls and narrowly avoiding fleeing people, clattering metal, shattering pottery, screams. With a final devastating impact, you crash through the wall of a building at the end of the street. The structure crumbles around you and your companions buried under a jumbled mess. What warmth there was is snuffed out in an instant, replaced by the chill of the outside air and the snow that gently drifts in through the gaping wound in the tavern's side. As the initial shock fades, the sounds of the market begin to rise once more. What happens next is up to you after you roll 4d10 and take that amount of bludgeoning damage. Oh! <laughs> right out of the gate! Oh! I'm not even raging! 4d10? This, this could, in Jeez. theory, destroy my TV life. Chaos. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fun fact, I did the math, and there's a Shit. 1 in 27,306 chance that this will TPK you. We are not, we're not doing massive damage. No. <laughs> yeah. No, fuck no. Yeah. Uh, 18, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. I took 23. Jeez Louise, I'm hanging on by a thread. Oh boy. 4d10. 4d10. Wow. I took 18 me. points. I actually rolled pretty well. I got 23. 18. You would think I would pull up my character sheet at the beginning and not literally mid-play. I welcome max, max damage. Here do we go. Three or four D10. Four. Four D10. Oh. Only 22. Damn. 20. This is when I want to roll well. I got a two, one, and a five. Whoa! Wow. I took, the, I took the most, because the... What's the ogre name, Tuck? Hmm? What's the ogre name, Tuck? 
Tack. Tack? He landed on me and I took 23 points of damage. <laughs> and tack crushed every bone in my body. I have three hit points. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking so hot either, brother. <clears throat> you all collide with this wall and crashing around <clears throat> you, timber beams slam down. Uh, you can hear glass shattering. You can hear the murmur, the excited shouts of people outside. What are you all doing? No! <laughs> 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 Uh, is anybody dead? Oh. Sound Wait, off! Tech alive. Uh, I need to check my hit points real uh, quick to make sure. It, it feels that way. We don't think so. <clears throat> oh my god. Uh, what happened? I don't think we're in the cave anymore. <sighs> what does it look like when you look around? Uh, right now, you are uh, looking up at uh, what appear, clearly appears to be a tavern. Uh, a tavern? There, there is a, um, uh, the sledge has clearly like crushed into the side of it and you can still hear the whimpering sort of whistling sound of the um, dragon still attempting to blow, but you're not pro uh, progressing with momentum anymore. You are lodged in the side of this launch. And uh, one beam that seems to be holding up um, uh, much of the center structure uh, has cracked at one side and is just holding on to the side of the uh, the sledge above you. Um, but everything around you, it's hard to see behind you because the wall has essentially caved in on this side of the building. Uh, pardon the intrusion. We, we made a wrong turn. <laughs> Previous. Uh, it is early morning, so there aren't a huge number of patrons inside of this tavern. As you start to um, push uh, uh, material off of yourself and start to uh, uh, get up and, 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 and find order in your body, you're uh, uh, looking forward and there only seems to be one person. Uh, very far at the end of the tavern, you, uh, you see looking up, uh, blinking, someone who's seemingly just woken, a uh, uh, older human man uh, with gray hair like a comb over, uh, nearly balding, um, wearing uh, uh, thick robes and he's <laughs> uh, he picks up a flagon and he starts to walk over to the bar to apparently make himself some more ale. <laughs> is, is, is everyone okay? Ah, her elbow. Some, somebody check on Queenie. I haven't heard from her. Oh, I'm fine. I'm just laying here under some rubble thinking about my life choices. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> oh, he's... <clears throat> I wanna, I'll look up at the man and I'll say, where, where are we? Uh, I'll get, use my staff to pick myself up. You're in Argent home. I'll sort of kind of strain my eyes. Is this where we intended to go? No, you don't know. Is this the uh, Silver Dragonborn capital? Yeah, it is, it is, it is, yes, uh, it's, uh, uh, that's what you were intending to go to, you found the right place. Uh, I'm gonna be honest, I didn't expect to see a human here. Well, I'm... you're the only one in the capital city. What? I found myself, uh, uh very much, uh, like yourself, sort of crashing into the place. <laughs> and, and you just never left? Yeah, there's not much out there, I figured I'd stay here. Well, that's probably a good sign, right? They welcomed an outsider and we're all outside. Sorry about the wall, by the way. First time with the sledge. <laughs> it's not my tavern. And he uh, starts to <laughs> pour himself uh, an ale and uh, uh, gingerly sip at the, uh, uh, the top. I will like loose myself from the wreckage, like holding my ribs and like, <clears throat> like shuffle over to the bar. And when I get up to him, I'm gonna look right up at him, pick up my hand, place a gold coin on the counter and say, I'll take one too. Gold. You should be very careful showing gold around here. Really? Why? It's something the princess covets, of course. Okay, well, it's just one and I didn't want to steal it. No. I'm turning into Monty. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> You don't understand. The appearance of gold in Argent Home is 
it's, 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 it's not something that's seen. It's mined up by the dwarves, of course, but it's not. Uh, this would be like flashing a thousand gold pieces here. Uh, so I should put it back. Uh, well, I'm about to pay for my drink, and he puts a uh, five copper down on the uh, top of the, uh, uh, of the bar. I, I don't have any change. Uh, hold, hold on to that. You'll be in some trouble for the damage you've caused, and this might be able to smooth things over. Okay, uh, so how about for now you just spot me some copper, and I'll get you back. I'll spot you as much copper as I have for mm, a gold piece. Look, I'm really trying to be a better person here and not steal the alcohol. I'll throw a silver in, too. Whose tavern is it? This is a... You're... You found yourself in the Whispering Hearth, a man named Ma. White Kobold knows it. There is nothing that can be done. Yeah, yeah. We do not possess the time or ability to repair this. And we are pilgrims, we have uh, no coin. Well, maybe, he, how, how much pride did he take in, in the establishment? Uh, how well he had it put together. Oh. Most white kobolds join the enforcers. Ma built this place with his two hands. Oh. It is his way of honoring the princess. A uh. place where peoples of all the tribes can gather before they head to the market. <clears throat> Look, I know I only have the one, but we'll just give him the gold coin and we'll fix, we'll make it all better, all right? <clears throat> we, we only have one coin? Yes, we only have one coin. I'm not sure. <laughs> if you do it in private, perhaps, that would be best. People knowing Fine. you have gold around here could be quite dangerous. Ah, no worries. I don't mind. I mean, let's be fair. That I've been hanging on to that gold coin. It's my lucky coin. For a long time. It hasn't done us any good on the rest of your car. That may do it. Yeah, I can hear him now. And you hear a voice from outside. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I'm going to very quickly heal myself uh, in case there's any trouble. The door is kicked in, and a flurry of snowflakes breathes in, and you can see an enraged white kobold, uh, 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 older than the other enforcers that you've met, uh, 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 walk in. What has happened? What has happened to my beautiful tavern? We made a minor miscalculation. Who are you? What are you? No offense was met. I'm like leaning on my anchor very horribly. <laughs> my, my femur is like snapped up <laughs> on my leg as I'm holding on. I'm just drenched in blood instead of seawater. Poet, do you know these people? Uh, no, 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 of course, no, no, not me. He takes another sip of his ale. Uh, this kobold um, uh, looks at each of you uh, and looks at you up and down and sees that you are not a familiar uh, species to him. Um, he looks at the at the uh, 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 broken sledge and, and all of the damage, and you can you can immediately tell without even having to uh, uh, discern without much insight that he is starting to look to head to the door to call for help. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, look, it was an honest, it was an honest accident. We did, we just, we, we lost control of the sledge, and we ended up in the side of your tavern. If there's, uh, if there's any way that we can fix it, what the hell were you thinking? We weren't. We are simple travelers. Our ship was icebound south of the wastes. We found the tunnel in the mountain, and we found the sledge, sled, and did not know how to operate it. We did not know that it. Emptied out into a tavern, seemingly. Look, uh, wh 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 what do you think it would cost to repair it? Uh, just, you know, speaking frankly. It could take months and uh, hundreds of gold, uh, uh, silver pieces worth of work. <laughs> it took me all my savings just to build this place. All right, well, let, let, let's all just calm down and maybe we can come to a solution. You left. Quite a scene out there. Was anyone killed? I didn't see anyone killed, no. I will make sure. I wanted to sort of walk past, like through the carnage 
and just see if anyone's like lying there dead or wounded. <laughs> um, when you peek out through the door and turn, um, you can see uh, the two um, rudder uh, runner. Uh, like sledge rails that led through the town and straightened as an arrow eventually coming to this spot. In the chaos of everything that unfolded and as you guys were pulled through, it wasn't as though the doors were here and the tavern was, uh, uh, you know, just outside and in front of the doors. You went hundreds of feet. Well, right, and that's, And yeah. so you crash through stalls. You can see people picking things up. Uh, make a perception check for me. Uh, 26. 26. Um, you can see uh, that most people who are um, uh, getting up and, and dusting themselves uh, off, you don't see any of the signs of, of someone looking over a body or, or screams of someone having lost their friend or anything like that. It seems that mostly you're staring at angry vendors who are picking their things up and looking at, uh, uh, following the line of the uh, of the railing, uh, the rail tracks, and seeing they starting to pick themselves up and come your way. A crowd is gathering. We should leave right away. I'll also add, uh, with a 26, um, that you see uh, a mix of different peoples. Uh, this is not all kobolds. You see many kobolds. That is clearly the dominant, uh, uh, at least in this marketplace, race in this particular section of the city. But you also see really massive, bald, gray-skinned uh, uh, creatures, uh, uh, Goliaths. You see uh, uh, shorter um, dwarven people with massive co uh, uh, braided beards. You see, um, uh, you see orcs. You see uh, 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 even a tall minotaur, taller than you, 10, 11, 12 feet tall, wow. hulking and, 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 and shambling in, in all directions. They seem to have come here for uh, not um, unique or exotic goods. This was a marketplace for butchery and for raw goods goods and th these sorts of things. So uh, and, and even though ceramic pots and things lay, lay crash open and, and stuff like that, it's, it's as though uh, uh, this was a place where people were buying their morning produce or, or uh, looking to haggle. Yorin, Yorin, I'm, I'm, I'm making this right. I make this. I don't want him to call the guard. I don't want to end up in jail again. All right, please, let's let's divide and conquer. Maybe you guys just deal with the crowd and let me talk to him privately, just for five minutes. Oi, 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 oi. Where, where's the nearest healer? <laughs> <laughs> I'll stumble over to you, and I'll, I can try to help, uh, and I'll use cure wounds on you as well. How's Queenie looking and Taishan? I'm, okay. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. But I, I had, well. I think, three hit points. I'm fucked up. I had three. <laughs> I, had three I only well. look slightly better than Barnabas. <laughs> Yone, we just destroyed his entire establishment. We can't just leave. Trust me, I, I, I can fix this. I stare directly at you. That's only three feet to you, right? <laughs> Ten to you and 13 to you. Yes. <sighs> you can give me the 13. Yeah. What do you say? <laughs> what Second do you level's say? first level. Uh, <laughs> yes. Do what you need to, and uh, I will uh, help. <laughs> well, I, I, also, cast your hands. Hey, my name's Mr. Yornir. You're lost exactly where you are. I didn't Don't move we're, a muscle. We're not going anywhere. I didn't catch your name. My name is Scrim Staviscotch. Ma. Ma, it's a pleasure to meet you. He doesn't take your hand. Oh, uh, okay. Do you have uh, uh, an office or a back room somewhere we can talk privately? We... Live upstairs. We would be able to speak there, but I fear it might crash down upon us at any moment. Why don't you pour a couple of ales, me and you, and we'll have a quick chat. I think we can fix this. Come to some kind of agreement. Does the pillar that's wobbling but holding things up, does it look like it could be stabilized with, like, honey web? Um, the... What would have been like a large center beam has cracked it completely in two. So one side is completely flattened against the floor of this. I don't know what we're listening to. I'm, I'm going to switch over. <laughs> uh, horror film. You know what? Why not? Um, has completely flattened against the wall of uh, the floor. And the uh, top side, you just happened to collide fast enough that it didn't collapse in this way. So in order to put it together, um, you'd have to find some way to get underneath it and get the sledge out from underneath it. Um, I don't know if Honey would be able to hold those two big things together. We could find out depending on what you're mechanically attempting to do. Oh no, it's okay. I, I was picturing it. 
Okay, I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Um, <clears throat> make a persuasion check. Perhaps the rest of us can get this sled thing out of here. Pack will help. 18. 18. Of course, a mail before the rest get here and we'll have a quick chat. Great! Uh, lead the way. Uh, he uh, sidles around. He immediately goes into bartender mode, amazingly uh, uh, pulling out two flagons, uh, filling them out, uh, out with ale, and uh, uh, slamming slamming down the, the, the drink. Uh, and I'm hoping that there's just enough privacy to talk to him so that the other patron, that elder gentleman, doesn't hear what we're talking about. Um, mm. The elder uh, gentleman seemed to have picked up already on what you were doing. Savvy, uh, and he um, has sort of walked over and is sort of looking through the cracks of the destruction at the uh, street outside as uh, people are assembling. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. Just like Bonobo said, we've been here in Jakar for a long time. Our, 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 we get, we were, we were stuck in the ice. Our ship got stuck in the ice. It, it went down. We've been trekking, pilgrimaging for months. It's been a long time. We came here with a lot of gold, and we very quickly learned that it didn't do us any good, so we got rid of all of it. There was nothing to do with it. But... Where did you get rid of it? Various points in the ice, the water. Oh, you the sea? Dumped it into rivers. It's scattered in the depths. Uh, in, near, near, near Arginal? No, no, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. On the other side of the spine? Oh, easily. Uh, there, other places here, there, you know, wherever we've been, right? Uh, it was too heavy to carry. There was nothing we could do. We needed to carry food. But I kept two gold coins. They're my lucky coins. And I'd be willing to part with them if we could make all of this just go away. I have under the impression that gold's pretty valuable around here. You'd be right. Two gold pieces, you say? It's the last of it. And you think about the gold that's on your person. These coins are maybe so big, right? Maybe a little bit larger, like a, a silver dollar mm -hmm. uh, in our in our um, world. And you're thinking about them jingling around in your in your pouch. And <laughs> the way that he responds uh, physically, emotionally to just you know. In your coin purse. I have 93 of them. I know. You're thinking about all of them. Yeah. And the way that he responds to two, he looks around and you can already feel with your intuition that that might already have swayed him. Mm. Reasonable, right? I don't have any use for them. Like I said, they're just, they're just lucky. I was only holding on to them for sentimentality. Two, two gold pieces. But! This all goes away. This all goes away, but you can't, I, we don't want to talk about it, right? We just keep it between you and me. It's a sign of good faith. Uh, it was an accident, and I feel bad. It's Scream. just the kind of person I am. Scream, Scabascotch, you have a deal. Okay, uh, and then I go into my jacket to make it look like I am, uh, like, cutting a seam to get them out of where I might have sewn them into my clothing. Mm, nice, nice. Um, so if I need to make a sleight of hand check, I'll happily do that. Um, you need to make a sleight of hand check because I'm presuming that these pieces of gold were with other pieces of gold. Yes. Yeah, very and much so, so. it is not just a question of, of where did this uh, gold come from, but endeavoring to keep silent. <sighs> I, I would like to bolster my already incredible sleight of hand a little bit. What do you guys think? Yeah. Reasonable? Yeah. Can I, add, can I add three to my roll? Let's add three. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. That will be a 26. Oh! Jeez. Oh. So Jeez. I almost like reach in and then, ha ha ha, and then I like make them basically appear out of nowhere. His eyes are glazed over. Uh, you realize that you almost didn't need to go through the effort. As long as it had been muffled, his eyes are already looking at the, the transformation in his life. Like. This is bigger than the tavern to someone like Ma. And uh, before you know it, you know that you have two coins in your hand without distraction. And then I will quietly slide them to him and say, remember, they're lucky. As soon as you reveal your hand and pull your hand away and he sees the two gold pieces, <laughs> he, he hides them away. It is good to do in business with you, Scrutin. You said you 
came from afar, from, from somewhere else, yeah. with all this gold, where did you come from? Uh, entirely different continent. I mean, we are all from different places, uh, other continents other than Drakkar, you know. Well, you are always welcome to have the Whispering Heart once I get these repairs done. Awesome. Uh, thanks for the ale, huh? He um, uh, <clears throat> uh, puts his uh, ale down, and then he immediately like goes and grabs a broom, and like almost as if, he, as if he's in a trance, picturing some other life. He's starting to uh, put uh, put the tavern uh, uh, back together again. All righty, <clears throat> and then I'll return to the rest of the crew. I think we're all right. Maul's not such a bad guy, after all, eh? Eh? He's okay with the tavern? Yeah, fixed it all up. Well, great. There is an angry crowd descending upon us. Well. We have mere moments. <laughs> we can get away, but let's get out of here. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah let's slip away, but Ma, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't hate us. So, we you know, I think the we'll... sledge out, though. And I have my palms firmly pressed against the side of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Tack well. Tack be alive and give us a hand here. Um, <laughs> make an intelligence check, anyone pushing the sledge. <laughs> Not me. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Oh. Six. Eleven. Nineteen. Taishan, it's as you are pushing, Tack uh, uh, at one side, Barnabas, Yornir at the other, you're starting to push the sledge back and out, and uh, you are the one who notices that the um, beam that is holding up most of the center of, and roof of this uh, tavern starts to grind against the top of the sledge. Um, should the sledge be pushed out from underneath it, you suspect that perhaps more building will come down upon you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, hey. we have to leave the sledge where it is. It's keeping the building up. Tack will push. No, no, oh, no, 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 Tack. no, no. Tack, no. Tack will not push. That sounds better. If you, if we move the sledge, the whole building will come down, maybe. I'm no architect. <laughs> well, let's... If there is an angry mall coming, we'll let uh, Maul explain the whole thing away. We'll find some place to lay low. Yeah, this isn't our problem anymore. Get our bearings, yeah, so to speak. This isn't our problem anymore. The find problem's been taken care of. Well, let, let's go. Let's All get right. out of here. Let's go with what Yornia said. Let's leave. All right. Uh, I will, I guess, can I just peek out like behind the, sl the sledge and just sort of see what the situation looks like? And the, the time can? that has passed during Shroom's conversation and, and uh, everyone endeavoring to work the sledge, um, uh, it, a, the crowd has assembled. You can see that people are, are um, looking, uh, 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 whispering ang ang angrily to each other. Uh, there are vendors who are, are holding uh, what's left of perhaps uh, what they brought for the day against their chest, and and uh, uh, the shops are starting to um, emerge. The only reason that they haven't uh, stampeded into the tavern is because of a lone kobold uh, standing there. Uh, uh, I will figure it out. I will figure out what the problem is. We'll figure out why this uh, uh, sledge uh, crashed into if there really is anyone in there, even. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, spear-wielding kobold will uh, start to trot around to the side, um, sort of placating the, ma the, the mob uh, for but a moment longer. Does it look like he's a guard, like a town, some sort very of law much, enforcement? Very much. Okay. Mm. Uh, and how tall are these kobolds, roughly? Um, I would say that uh, it varies. Uh, someone like Ma uh, might be about the same height as uh, Scrim. Uh, others might be slightly taller. Um, this one seems to be on the taller side, and uh, uh, it seems to wear uh, a, uh, like a small cape and some armor uh, with a sense of authority. And have I seen any dragonborn at all? Mm. Uh, no, you've not seen a single dragonborn. Uh... I agree we should leave. We have mere moments. Hey, Ma! We need a bit of a smoke out of that. Is there a back exit? Can we get out of here? Can we slip out the back? Yes, there's a, a back exit this way. All right, you heard the man. Let's go. Thank you, Mr. Fire Blossom. Uh, I'll nod, and I'll follow Scrim. <laughs> we hustle, and we uh, we slip out the back. You um, uh, hear a, a, an, another voice, and uh, Tack is stomping behind you. Um, you really have no idea what you're doing, do you guys? And mm -hmm. it's the poet. This uh, 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 gray-haired, uh, balding gentleman uh, has finished his ale, and uh, he's he, he's calling at you just one more time before you leave. Nope, and uh, we were never here. <laughs> See ya. There's a smaller 
well, okay, goodbye. And uh, you uh, start to head out. As you uh, press through the back door, um, you come across uh, a, not foggy site, but there is a very much um, a sort of icy sh- uh, sheet that hugs the ground, uh, almost like thin clouds that that, uh, that stick to the ground, this aura of cold in all directions. And and the back of the site, you can see that there are more market buildings on your left, on your right. This is very much a back alley. But from this vantage point, you can see that it continues to uh, uh, swim down to a massive lake. And at the center of that lake, just in the distance where visibility ends, you can see a huge island upon which there is very evidently a large keep or castle. Where do you guys go? And this is all underground. You are... No, no, no. You burst oh. through the doors, you are above ground. As, oh. the, the moment that you burst through the doors, you uh, crash out of the equivalent of the gate portal uh, that would have been on the other side of the, 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 the mountain. Uh, you are... The, the spine, if you turned around and you were able to look up, you would see mountains. Oh, wow. I did not make that clear. We need to find a place to lay low, to come up with a plan, to see where we are and what the danger is. Yeah, agreed. We should also try and blend in. Maybe some cloaks or something. We should pull up our hoods and remain inconspicuous. Wait, what we hood? Can. What? I don't wear much clothing. We don't have anything. He's barely got pants. <laughs> Take my tent and I throw you my tent. I'll grab it. I'll take a, I'll take a rope and tie it around. I'll like, look like my fucking Sarnax costume. Flowy <laughs> <laughs> and sleeves with the hood. Um, I will sort of pull up a hood, uh, and well, we all have like winter clothes, right? Like I think at least most of us. Um, and I will try to sort of keep it low, covering my face. Uh, and scramble just sort of out of view uh, to get a lay of the town or city. Why don't I draw a map? Yeah, let's do it. Ooh. 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 Take a quick minute while you're doing that. Ah. Uh, uh, the, uh, the blue pen, the, of, the blue pen. of indication. <laughs> All right. Um, the best wow. Map. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Is the lake. Yeah. Nice. Um, I also do have three silver pieces, just so you know. <laughs> no way. Um, what you did was you crashed through a gate and headed down and crashed into a tavern here through what was very much a marketplace. Uh, uh-huh. mm. Like so. Right? And so when you are... So, aside from this building here, you are looking at the back now at this massive uh, uh, lake. And it seems to sort of go upwards in its... uh, uh, Oh, God. uh, What's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of any words anymore. Um, It seems to be going... Uh, yeah, it slopes upwards. So e- even, like though the, this, like even though this slope? goes down, uh, if you were to you come down here, you'd actually meet the lake. There's almost like rising cliffs that get taller and taller and taller. Oh, wow. You, oh. Can, you can see about here to a large keep that is uh, uh, at the center of this island. And you can see all the way up to that visibility that there are perhaps huge districts that would wrap oh, wow. all around Holy here, shit. making these... Um, Making a city. I have just one question. It's been called Argentina. Oh, wow. Is your favorite awesome. painter George O'Keefe? <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> so it's sort of like. So the keep is on the lake. Yeah. Exactly right. Very <clears throat> cool. Very cool. Um, do we feel like we're in a valley? Like a caldera, like a... Oh, that's a good word. Like oh, so oh, careful the camera, Derek. Fine, camera, Derek. fine word. I'm getting very nervous. What's that? Careful the camera. <laughs> um, 
Uh, looking south, uh, you <laughs> suspect that uh, there is probably um, a forested area in this direction, and you can see very uh, uh, you can't see very far behind like buildings and everything. It, it's unclear if this is flat tundra or or anything along those lines. What you do know is that the spine, the mountains, are are directly behind you. And what about over here? Uh, the visibility stops here. This would all be oh, I in, see, like cliff. Fog. Yeah, I see exactly right. Oh. Um. Hey, that's cool. Look, if we need to find like an inn or something, we, I, you know, I, I got a little extra coin, you know, that I can burrow around a little bit here. And if his gold is as valuable as we think it is, especially the way old Maul reacted, I'm gonna have these idiots eating out of my hand in like a six hours. It's gonna be crazy. We should. Find some place to rest for the night. You're you're not worried about word getting around that you're giving gold out to multiple people. No, nope, nope. Because Ma thinks that I gave him the last two pieces. Right, but if someone else comes in with gold and they say they got it from the little mm -hmm. green fella. Nope, 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 nope. I got a plan. I have many plans. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. I can't wait. What, and you what, guys made fun of me for holding what, on to all. What's your plan, though? I'm gonna come up with them as we go. Oh. Uh, ready? Okay. Those are the best scrim plans. Oy, those are quite the good plans, eh? It's like the old days. Well, we have two ways to get up to the keep. We could take the... Do we know which way is north and south? I guess um, I would know which way is Mace, north and south. Mace, don't you you, innately you know? innately know okay. that Mace is north. That's what I thought. Um, yeah. If we intend to parlay with the Queen, we need to get up there once we are rested and ready. <clears throat> to get there, we need to go either on the north side or the south side of the lake. Based on what we can see, do you have a sense of which side might be more hospitable? Or perhaps you, Taishan? Giant step! Like, yeah, I was gonna ask her, friend Tack, how long have you lived in this city? Only a short time. <laughs> a few hours, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Good lad. Good lad. I like that. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> but what is Giant Step? Giant Step, and he points out, and he's pointing at the uh, most northern district there. This one. Oh. Mm. That's the name of that area? Ogre's taken there. Mm. Oh. Is it nice? Is it nice? <laughs> <laughs> Is it nice? Ah, uh, he doesn't seem thrilled. Is it hospitable or is it the prison district? <laughs> Are the humans there too? The vassals? Don't know where vassals went. Are you saying that, boy, what that gentleman said, that would imply that the vassals never made it to origin all? Yeah, that guy said that he's the only human. Is well, he lying? He said he was the only one who lived here. Maybe he didn't mean the vassals. Nah. Or maybe they took them elsewhere. When, they arrived recently. When Tack brought here, all went to Giant Step. Then we are split up. Nah. And I go to caves with Kobold. But most Yay. most stay behind with Goliaths. I'm saying this is the, right, the direction we go. We should rest in Giant Step. We find any more of those little sniveling cowards that we encountered in the tunnel. We should get ready to cave their skulls in. I don't want to call the scene, but I don't think we should be caving anybody's skulls in inside of a city. Yeah, we, we can't go back to jail. Uh, we, uh, well, that's what we were just preventing. Well, if you got gold in your pocket, Mr. Stabbis. Which I don't. But if... I'm, I'm very confused. <laughs> do you have gold or not? I, you I, need, you need not to keep your gold. voice down, Barnabas. Nobody has any gold. It's crazy rare here, Barnabas. I didn't realize you threw away all the gold pieces. I was going to be saying good thinking. You watched me throw them all away. I had a change in growth of character. I turned over a new leaf. You big buffoon. 
We should listen to Queenie and stop speaking about this. I'll be staring at, at uh, Scram and there'll be puffs of smoke. And I'll be... I. <laughs> that's true, Mr. Stavisgar. Joey did see you throw it all in the lake. It's all in the bottom of the ocean. The lake. Or the ocean. Whatever, river. It's, it's, it's a, a large, accessible. vast body of water. Only the bikes will be enjoying that gold. Zach right. like gold. Ah. Gold, gold, gold. <laughs> a lot of people like it. It's, you know, it's a popular thing. Crazy. Uh, I'm concerned about Tai Shen's appearance here. Oh, oh, no, he's like made of gold. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be crazy they ripped him apart? And they oh, he was made of gold. Whoa! Oh, whoa! Scrum! Oh, oh, wow. Mr. Stavis got. I mean that he's a dragonborn. Mm. What a Not wild thing gold. to say! Oh. No, I actually think Scrim's got a point. What if they think that each one of your scales is plated in gold and they start ripping all your scales oh. out? Wow! I'm not saying I want to do it, I'm saying what if they do? Why is what everyone do you mean talking awful to about watch? Me? You wouldn't step in? It torn be... pieces to pieces! I don't want to get torn to pieces. I, well, so, that, this actually raises a very valid point. Mr. Fireblast. Does it? Is, oh, you know that you have golden scales, but are, is it actually literally gold or it has the appearance? Is it more of a draconic high that you have? And that they wouldn't be tempted to flay you alive. And trade your skin as the as a great treasure nah. hoard. Ah. Well, Barnabas, I've never taken my skin to a jeweler and asked them what the value of it. Your was scales before. are not made of stone; it is flesh. It is the appearance of gold. Uh, but if they have a problem with Dragonborn, given the history of what we know about this city, there could be a problem. Well, we need a disguise. Yes. What do the kobolds look like? Uh, white kobolds. They have uh, draconic-like features. Um, they're not. Uh, they're a little more gangly uh, than uh, the gold dragonborn that you remember from home. They have uh, uh, these sort of long faces. Uh, they're almost like uh, if you could put a, a Tyrannosaurus Rex head onto a skeletal mm. body. Do they have scales? Oh. Let me uh, answer that orally. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, yeah, Morally. thin, thin uh, Hello, scale skin. Hmm. They do have scales, friend. These are the frosty kind. I also have a question when session so ask questions. Do they? Last question. Take do time. they shed the scales? Sure. Yeah. Why not? You may ask me. How many of us, and I won't speak for anybody else, so Scrim, I guess, would Scrim have any knowledge about dragons in general and their colors and what that means? Metallic versus... Oh, I would say make a history check. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm expecting the answer to be no, but I wanted to ask... Scrim's been around. Oh, it's an int check. 18. Ooh! <laughs> With my plus one int bros. How about it? Int bros. Int bros. Even yeah, if it's yeah, just 19. a little bit, like, you know, may have heard something, right? Not, I wouldn't say his vast knowledge or anything. No, not intimately vast, but you do get a, uh, 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 remember, um, a tavern tale that you heard once, uh, and the claims, obviously, uh, every time you hear a story about dragons, it's one of creatures of tremendous power. Even at a young age, they're formidable. But the idea that there are uh, different types of dragons and that um, the ones in sort of the metallic direction and the ones that go in the more chromatic direction uh, being more akin, akin to and aligned with good yeah. versus akin to and aligned to evil was something that was suggested. And it was in partly uh, reinforced um, because... Uh, Often, and this isn't always the case, that perception of dragons uh, gets applied to dragonborn, perhaps unfairly. I, uh, mm. I am, I'm smiling and kind of giggling to myself, uh, picturing uh, Tai Shen being plucked uh, for all of his his scales, and then I say, <laughs> "Oh no, I get it. When you're saying he's a metallic dragon, these are white kobolds. I understand. Yes. Oh, uh, we do have a problem. Yes. Aye, uh, that's true. What? How do we?" Give you a bit of a disguise, oh, Mr. Fire Blossom. Oh, it would be so cool if we could paint him silver. White. Ah, I can't keep all this straight. Yeah. I don't think. Well, I don't have any paint. Well, neither do I. And even then, if there was just like 
a white dragonborn walking around. He was the only one. He'd stick out like a sore thumb. Wait, that's true. Well, I could hunch a little and keep my hood up, and maybe they think I was a kobold. You hear a sudden loud shouting voice, and it seems to be coming at the door that you just exited. Hey! Mala, you fucking liar! There, there are five people right back here! They're fleeing the scene! <laughs> oh no! Uh, giant step? Giant, giant step! Reason. <laughs> giant step! They split! And I'm like holding on tack to like get them to like follow yeah. us and run. No yeah. yeah. way! <laughs> I cheese it. I, get, I fucking just sprint. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, uh, you, you guys start funny. dashing and you start making your way, um, but with no sense of, uh, 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 knowledge of this district, it would be like being dropped into the middle of a city and uh, making arbitrary choices. Do you go left? Do you go right? Who's leading the way making these arbitrary choices and trying to decide what they sure. whether they are going down the first alley that you happen to turn from or, or the second? My thought is that if there's buildings and alleys and we sort of can't get our bearings very easily, you know I would you? probably be leading. Yeah. Just trying to kind of triangulate you know, like if you're driving in a city that has really shitty roads, but you roughly know you need to get over there. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, I'm just yeah, trying yeah, to take yeah, all the north. turns that I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have north a, an innate sense of what north is, yep. right? So you start to get head down and down and down. And, um, yeah, I need you all um, to make... Go ahead. If it's possible, if we feel like things are tight and, like... I, things or people need to be moved. I would be like following your near's lead, but I would if there's like a crowded thing, I will barrel through, not trying to cause any damage. But like if there's crowds or whatever, we're not going to get stopped by like a crowd. Like oh wow, look at those pots, those are really nice. Like I will make sure that I am elbowing or shouldering our way through the crowd, uh, and but making sure that your near is able to guide us. Um, it is uh, not in any of the alleys that you run into a crowd. And your near, uh, I would inde- imagine, uh, endeavors not to lead you into one of the walking streets where there would be a group, right. of, uh, a group of people. Um, go ahead and make what would be a good. Uh, you're being maybe chased, and you are endeavoring to get away. Skill check. Acrobatic. Uh, maybe like a, a stealth, Acrobatic. a survival, and. Uh... Acrobatics or athletics, as far as how quickly we're getting away. Yeah, like or like survive. getting through the city. I'm just thinking of like and Aladdin then, running like through the stealth, streets. Like stealth, and then deception. If you want to do like kind of a skill challenge thing, if it's just one roll. Let's go ahead and do a. Let's start with a survival and a stealth check. Um, group. Yeah, let's oh, go. Fuck. Let's go group. All right, my survival is going to be this guy. My stealth is going to be this guy. I'm gonna use my two best dice because I don't want us to fuck up. Now that we don't have any fucking twists. Oh, this is oh, rough. I should have. I should have. Uh... Yeah. Okay. This matters now. Holy hell. <laughs> survival is not good, but stealth's okay. I have a huge plus to survival, but yeah, I don't. Uh, <laughs> really good. Eleven on survival. Two threes. Uh oh, god, that's bad. My stealth is... Fuck, where did it go? Come on. Come on. Six for stealth. I got, uh, f- good. I have 15 on survival and 21 on stealth. Okay. I have five on sur- survival and 15 on stealth. And 19 on survival and 12 on stealth. Oh, what, was, what were yours? Uh, five on survival, 15 on stealth. 12 survival, 14 stealth. Okay. That's everyone. Oh, wow. You have mine? Uh, no. <laughs> That's everyone. I don't have yours. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You, I got yours right at the beginning. Six and 11. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six and 11. To check. Uh, I, those, those, were, those were the two X's that I made first. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh-oh. Yikes. We're oh, no. <laughs> uh, you all start to follow your near. And uh, you are making your way farther and farther uh, to the east. And uh, he is starting, he's trying to find that northern passage, the way to get 
uh, uh, perhaps cut through, and uh, awful. You turn, you turn, <laughs> you turn one down one alley, and you can see uh, uh, people walking back and forth. Perhaps a little bit farther down, you turn around. You guys all bump into each other, tack, uh, 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 endeavoring to keep up, just stomping back and, uh, uh, behind you. You turn in, uh, uh, down another street, and you continue for a little farther until you finally turn left. And there again, you uh, see in front of you uh, a, a, num- a group of people carrying baskets, uh, uh, um, uh, having wagons being drawn through uh, 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 this busy full city and it doesn't seem that you are finding any passage you're just continuing to get closer and closer and closer down to the lake as you do you are all noticing that the buildings are um, uh, in not worse and worse shape um, but not as kept up uh, well, you, you, what, what would have been the top of the market was clearly where the nicest of, of taverns are. You're getting into the uh, worser and worser neighborhoods um, and there's this stench that starts to hit you. As you get closer and closer to the lake, it's this almost uh, burned smell, this sort of like uh, uh, eggy smell, almost like sulfur uh, 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 hits you, but it's uh, uh, sour in a way that it tells you that it's not directly sulfur. Um, hmm. But you do not find a way to get north. You just continue down this path and uh, uh, you can uh, get a sense that you may have for now lost the the people who uh, you initially dashed away from given your immediate uh, jumping into into sprint mode but uh, you are still very much alone and isolated in this uh, in the back alleys of uh, this market area while we're doing this we're singing a show tune okay <laughs> and we each have a verse but we all join in for the chorus and there's not enough runtime for tax so he doesn't get a verse <laughs> <laughs> He has like a like a comedic one liner here and there. That's too bad. <laughs> we just met you. <laughs> you are very disposable, Doug. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's at this point that you're, um, you've essentially reached a dead end. You know that you would have to reach the actual um, uh, edge of the lake uh, and perhaps go across the uh, ice if it was frozen or uh, uh, dig into one of these uh, buildings and go through that way or, or find some way to hide um, because none of the alleys have been fruitful in your search to try and get out of this neighborhood in the, the immediate. Do any of the buildings look abandoned? Make a perception check. Ooh. Okay. Good call. Nah, I got an eight. You Not can good. try a shitty guess and just burst through the back door of one of these uh, uh, residences, marketplace, uh, vendors. Uh, you're, you're not sure. It's hard to tell from the back. We gotta find some place to lay low. We've all been saying it. Just a place to hide for now. Without breaking any local laws, if we could find some kind of inn or tavern around here and get a few rooms. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, do you want, so is it, does it feel like there's this, this like very intentional like wall between the, and that's why no, we can't find No, I, I mean through? there's delineations to give you a sense that they're like clearly like you're in the market district and then there's a district over here. The 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 the, the, the actual it's not like there are walls that that, that would be up. okay. Um, what what you've been doing is avoiding uh, large groups of people. If you want to just chance it and just walk right out into the street, certainly do that. Look, I see. I've got enough silver where I think we can just you know it won't draw suspicion. It's not the gold. And then we just use the silver. We can we can get a couple of rooms, you know, and and and, and then we'll be good. We'll lay low. All right. But we just gotta find one. Well, do we just knock on doors and say, "Hey, we're weary travelers, and we need a place to lay our heads down"? Have we seen any signage as we're running through this? And is it all like intraconic, or is it in common? Um, good question. The few times that you've seen signs peering into the sort of more uh, populated area of this uh, market, uh, the signs both have a common, a draconic, and a symbol uh, indicating that this might be a blacksmith, or this might be a a ceramic person, or a glass Ah, ah, Look for one with a bed! Look for one with a bed! Wait, would it be a bed? It's a little on the nose, Mr. Stavascott. No, I saw one with a hammer and a head, Bill. I was pretty on the nose, Mr. <laughs> Dreadlight. No, I ain't as fair as ain't true. <laughs> we will look, or I will look, for either, like, uh, anything that would be several stories, presuming, like, providing an end. Mm. 
So anything that would, if it has like a flagon or like you can get a drink here, if it has multiple stories, I'd consider that perhaps an opportunity of having being an end. It takes you five. Ten, or a bed. It takes you five or ten bad. minutes. Um, make a survival check for me. Me? Mm-hmm. Cold plug. Ah! That's pretty, oh, that's pretty good. Oh, 23. Oh, oh shit. Wow. That's pretty good. I forgot that's my proficiency. <laughs> Um, you uh, have stopped running. Um, it's, so. been, it's been it's uh, yes. been uh, a long enough time that you think perhaps you've lost the people who were immediately um, hurt by your entrance to the city, and you walk uh, uh, sort of down one of the alleys to one of the uh, st- these streets, and you peek down and out, and you look for a two uh, a two-storied building. And sure enough, uh, uh, just a few buildings down, um, there is one that looks more like an inn to you than a tavern. And uh, this, uh, you can see the sign out front does in fact have a bed uh, 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 on it, but it is pierced with a feather quill. And underneath it says the quiet quill. And you um, envision that that is probably the... Uh, a, a place where you would be able to find a place to rest for the night. You're right, Mr. Samus Coach, it is a bed! <laughs> <laughs> right over here, right over here! All right, quick, I mean, I mean, like, over here, over here. And let me just do the talking, all right? All right. Oh, my I, I will... <laughs> like, I still have the giant anchor, like, <laughs> on my back, and uh-huh. I'll just, uh... Try to wrap it in, like... I guess you have a pretty big tent. I'll try to cover it in the. I'll like. I'll be like a horrible, like hooded abomination as I walk. I'm very like awkwardly <laughs> shaped as I walk. Uh, I'll be behind everyone. I'll pull my winter clothes around as well and try as hard as I can to not let any of my golden scales show. Mm. Um, I would need a group performance check oh, to walk shit. across the street to see how noticeable you are. Oh boy. Well, uh, you know what? Or deception. Oh, uh, uh, oh yeah. Either not, way, it's not plus even zero. I'm good. I'm. I got a plus eight instead, so I'm gonna take that. Okay. <laughs> uh, twenty-two for me. Twenty-three. Oh. Eleven. Thirteen. Three. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's no hubbub, but you feel eyes on you as you walk across the street <laughs> and <laughs> and make your way onto the equivalent of a sidewalk in this city, and you start to uh, walk <laughs> forward. Um, you uh, start to um, walk down, and you, you can feel the eyes are not just on you, but also on Tack. And uh, Shit, that's right. You get you that get to the off. entrance of the quiet quill when you, you hear when ogre. you hear a voice. What what you bring an ogre here for? And you turn and you can see this massive uh, 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 Goliath. Uh, is uh, looking at the f- backs of the five of you and pointing, uh, clearly referencing Tack. Uh, uh, oh, what What did we bring the ogre? Oh, the ogre! Oh, yeah, he's... Do you turn to face him? Yeah, he's lost. What creature are you? Uh, I'm a goblin. It's goblin in city? Why, what? what is goblin? You're never going to believe it. I'm lost, too. I will approach him and step in front of Scrim, and I will lift my hood, and you will see that instead of orange hair and like a blue fur, I now appear to have gray skin with black hair that is now braided similarly with tattoos um, similar in his style, mm-hmm. using uh, my innate uh, fey ancestry to cast uh, disguise self. Okay, and I'm going to appear as a Goliath, uh, and in giant. I will say, uh, these are my employees. What is goblin? It is an exotic creature that I have found in my many travels. I am a traveler, a pilgrim, through much of Drakkar, and uh, this ogre was gifted to me. You come from tribe from beyond Argentum? Yes, I do from very far, and I have collected a band of uh, travelers and mercenaries, you could say. You found them from outside of city? Yes, I did. And why are you here with them, with an ogre? He should be in the training camps, should he not? 
I have connections inside the city and I needed additional muscle. As you can see, and I'll search the point and scrim and cleanie. <laughs> we can't understand him, so I'm just like smiling like yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, I pulled some strings and I was able to uh, call in a favor. Uh, and so we are here on important business that I cannot elaborate on. What is your name? Um, what would I know of either Goliath names or in general giant, uh, giant cultures? Make a at disadvantage because <gasps> you are unfamiliar with totally. what you know of Gol of Goliath in the north may be very different than it is in southern Drakkar. And so uh, your um, idea of what a Goliath might name itself or others uh, in their in a tribe uh, from your experience might be very different. Uh, so uh, yeah, make a history check at disadvantage. Oh, let's fucking go. Who needs twists? I rolled an 18 and a 19. Oh! Oh, let's so go. A plus one, that's a 19. Bravo. You, what was the full number? 19. 19, okay, let's go. Um, that in, in Giant, um, most folks refer to uh, Goliath with, um, by the, the sound of the giant can name. So in Giant, it would be something really badass sounding, like Grim Blood or Rumble Fist. But at the end of the day, the what people in common would call them would be something like Grimgar or Torval or something along those lines. I had a name in mind. Before you even open your mouth, I'm going to stick to it. I love that. My name is Grimnir. He, uh, make a uh, deception check at advantage. Well done. That's pretty good. That's An pretty advantage? Good. Yeah, that's pretty good. It notch up to a 15 if you're, if you're not there. I should have called the twist, but it's too late. Wait, we can call it, right? When we, when we, or we have to call it before we roll? That's what we discussed. That's I thought, what I, did. Oh. I thought it was just before we knew what the DC was. Before we knew was. if it would pass or fail. Oh! Like advantage. That's like a little easier. Like advantage or disadvantage. It's a bit easier. Or, uh, it's up to sure. Derek. Yeah, yeah, Regardless... Yeah. I believe it is a. That's what you got. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's a plus zero. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a twelve. Why? Yeah, you three. So yeah, you three if you were going to allow me to use three twists, I will. Otherwise, I should have called it. Before. Yeah. Do you want us to I, call I, it before I, we roll? Uh, I will allow it this time because we hadn't made that super clear. Yes. But I would like oh. it to be called before because otherwise you can I be agree. like, what's the next divisible by five DC thing? Yeah, I agree. Oh, Which that's fair. And it becomes yeah. this weird game. That's uh, fair. Uh, so yeah. yeah. I will pull. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like I think. What do you think? Should we use him? Yeah. Use him. Okay. okay. That's pretty bad. I yeah, this, is, this is really bad. Yeah. You deserve it. <laughs> is it yeah. 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 This one time. Yeah. This one time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes chat tells the story. You know what I mean. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Heard that? Yeah. Uh, so you get a total of 15? 15. 15. One moment. I feel good about that number. Me too. Yeah. It was a 33, you <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> you don't know what's inside those. Grimnir was my cousin's name. <laughs> uh, I am Dorval. It's. Strange creatures you have in your company. I understand why you did not bring them to the giant step, but when you get back to the Legion, you find me at the Grub Shack, and we talk about what you have seen beyond the walls. Shack. It's a little <laughs> we grub can shack. eat together. Is that near the hub? Is that a little grub place? <laughs> <laughs> Is this no, a place for little he, grubs? He holds his hand out like this in some sort of a gesture of brotherhood or camaraderie. I'll do the most obviously like strong, macho, badass thing that I can think of in response. I'll like grab his hand, or, you know, whatever like uh, whatever I think I would do based on the position of his Make hand. Make a insight check. <gasps> That's pretty good. That's, That's go. pretty good. You're on fire. It's the uh, scene from The Predator. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. Dylan. Yeah. 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 23. Yeah. What is with the time? 23. You start to go into Clasp his hand and feel his hand start to go to the um, wrist. The four, yeah, yeah. And in that moment, you realize that you need to do one oh, of these. Oh, easy. And easy. Uh, uh, with that um, uh, tense social situation uh, cleared, uh, he pushes through and past Tack and uh, sort of gives him a hard look. Uh, uh, as though he is he isn't where he should be um, before leaving the six of you alone there in front of the quiet quill. Holy crap! What happened? Uh, let's get inside. Okay, all right, come on, come on, come on. I am Grimnir from now on, do you understand? Oh, okay, Mr. Grimnir. I got it. And we, we usher everyone into the, the quiet quill. It's only one syllable difference, easy to remember. Is that right, Tack? Huh? I think we gotta kill the <laughs> <laughs> Bad news, guys. We gotta kill the other. I don't uh, say that. I don't say that. I look very like concerned at Scrim directly yeah. as I go in. You you walk inside and as we're going inside, I'm gonna make an effort to actually separate the gold from the silver. Because uh, there's only three silver pieces. Okay. Um, and because I know I'm I'm hopefully going to only need to use. Maybe one or two silver, right? To 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 get some runes, we'll see. I, uh, I don't know. I'm right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do that, and I think that it wouldn't be difficult um, because once you enter, uh, you can see that this is a very dark um, space that you enter. The light uh, coming in through the windows doesn't illuminate very much, and there clearly uh, haven't been any fires lit or candles. It's it's quite cold, uh, and so uh, you walk in, and this space seems to be totally empty. There are a few tables, uh, uh, and for what looks like an eatery, uh, some sort of a, a place where you'd be able to get um, a meal, but uh, it doesn't seem like a place where breakfast is served. So uh, without uh, anyone to greet you, uh, you walk into a completely silent space. You work for me. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, sure, of course. I mean, I, I basically do anyway, let's be real here. <laughs> but if, yeah, if you need to take the lead, just you know, let them know that we have some silver. And, and try to you know, talk them down as low as you can. And if, you know, I mean, get them to speak common, and I'm happy to, like, you know, pretend, like, just order me around. I'll do whatever. Come on. Ask them if they have tea. You do the talking. Just let them know that I am in charge. And, like, you'll look up, and, like, my face is super grim. Yeah. And, like, I'm, like, I, in this appearance, I'm totally missing the eye, and I have a really exaggerated scar Badass. on my right eye. Um, and I'm going to sort of just have my hood up and look very brooding, like Strider style, and kind of look serious, mm. and then I'm sending one of my minions to get us rooms. You said there's nobody here. Not on this floor. Um, ah, hello? Hello, we're looking for lodging. My employer is very impatient. <laughs> You hear <laughs> Albert Westerman. <laughs> uh, you hear the sound of um, footsteps uh, creaking on the floorboards above you. Before uh, you hear a voice, customers. Uh, potentially, yes. We're hoping. And uh, you hear. And what confronts you in this moment um, is uh, a, from a morning of uh, strange images, uh, the strangest one that you've seen yet. But around the corner is a completely bald, heavily tattooed elf uh, with extremely like ivory white skin with these uh, contrasting colors uh, of uh, uh, inked patterns all over uh, this person. And uh, they turn and sort of creepily like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the Quiet Quill. Can oh, I help you? Uh, yeah, I hope so. We're looking for some rooms, potentially. Well, we have rooms. Okay, uh, how much? How can I uh, be of service? I, uh, 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 we, we can, um, uh, uh, to accommodate all six of you and an ogre? Yes, that, that would be the case, yes. We work for this guy. Look at him. He's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a man that you want to piss off. Let me tell you. See, uh, yes, uh, I, 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 uh, we, we can, we can absolutely accommodate you. Would you be staying for just the one night or one or two? Ah, uh, potentially just the one, but maybe with you know a little option to extend it. Depends on your prices. Uh, for, for perhaps a. Uh, uh, 20 copper uh, for the night. I look, I look up my employer. 
I nod. They I are very nice rooms. I, 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 we, we, that, that, that would be for the suite. I think maybe we're looking more like ten copper. Oh. I'll do it for you. I need as many customers as I can get, to be honest. Thank you. We appreciate your service. Perhaps you will show us to our rooms and I will issue payment promptly. Uh, 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 upstairs, upstairs. <laughs> he starts He starts to uh, sing and jauntily makes his way up uh, through uh, uh, the stairs, uh, uh, leading you uh, past uh, one or two rooms before he swings the door open. And you can see that this is actually uh, quite a luxurious uh, 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 little place that you found for yourself. There's a, a wide, comfy bed and um, a nice uh, uh, window view of the street downstairs, uh, down out, uh, out front of the inn. I look to my employer. Hmm? Hmm? Satisfactory? Hmm. <laughs> All right, everybody inside, and I will issue payment promptly to the gentleman. Please. And don't call, uh, hesitate to call if you need anything. Uh, All right. Look, we've been traveling through Jakar for a long time. We don't have a lot of coin left, but we've got enough for tonight. So I'm going to give you my lucky coin. Traveling in Jakar? Oh yeah, it's crazy. That's a wild story. I'd love to tell it to you sometime. No time. Here, take this. And I, I hand him a single silver piece. He's, he's suddenly like dawning on him that he's like looking at creatures that seem extremely alien to him. Yes, yes, I know. I'm a horrific he's, abomination. He, focus, focus. <laughs> He, you hand him a silver piece, he makes change and hands you the remaining copper you're owed, and uh, the door, uh, uh, I imagine, closes as he's like sort of giving you this quizzical look. Um, uh, Don't hesitate to call, uh, I, I'll be just downstairs. Shouldn't be any change. Why not? 10 copper pieces, one silver piece? Oh, you already, you hand. I hand him one silver piece. Oh, I'm. I'm doing the 100 to one. Should be 10, right? 10 yep. to 10? 10 uh, he gives you 80 10. copper pieces, is, is, what, is, 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 is how I would do it in my brain. But no, he, you, you, get your, uh, you get your no change. Scrim you. runs a, a change scam. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually need change for this pack. Uh, sorry, sorry, I, I always saw that conversion up where I go 1 to 100. No, it's all good. And then as he's like leaving, I'm like, thank you, we'll be in touch. If there's any way to like lock the door, is there any kind of like mechanism to? Yeah, in the back there's a simple turnkey. <sighs> and as like oh. a, the, the my the illusion will probably at the last minute fade, uh. as it only lasts I think like ten minutes. Oh shit! Uh. Uh. All right. The good news is, for now, he won't be suspicious of much. But like Queenie said, it's only a matter of time before they start talking about all of us that look crazy. There's this creaking sound as Tack sits on the uh. bed, uh, and he like sort of like sits down. Tack tired. That makes five of us, buddy. Oh, yeah. And that's where we'll take a quick break. Ah, oh. Oh. ah we did it. All right. We've got, we bought ourselves some time. I cannot do that again until I rest. Well, do we think we're safe for tonight? Do you Maybe. think he'll come back and check on us, or...? No, I don't Can... think he'll bother us. Well, we paid him quite well. Uh, who is it? I was wondering if you'd like some snacks. Well... <laughs> are they free? <laughs> Flat me in the ass no, and call me oh, Bessie. I, I, I just know wrong. the kitchen is closed in the morning, so I didn't know if you wanted any snacks. Uh, I, I put my hood up and turn away from the door. I, and I'm I not at Scrim. Click. We do want snacks, though, Scrim. How much for the snacks? And I'm like, I'm like barely sticking like my nose and one eye out. Of the, the Ask door. him if he has any tea. Just a few uh, copper pieces. We have uh, fruits and vegetables. Oh, uh, what about tea? You have any tea? They've got fruits and vegetables. You guys feel about fruits and vegetables? Like fruits and vegetables kind of suck. Do they have any? Yeah, no, no, fruits and vegetables are great. Do they have any carrots? Do you have any carrots? Uh, carrots galore! Oh my God! Can you get like, just a bunch? Uh, we'll get some carrots. What else? What else? What do you guys want? Oh, do you have apples? Fish. Apples. Some. Oh, do you have meat? Do you have any meat? meat? Ask them if they have any oh, yeah. apples. No, we, we don't serve any. Oh meat yeah. Do you have any pineapples? There's I like the way they make my tongue. No meat. What about a pineapple? I've never even heard of a pineapple. I don't know what that is either. I've never heard of a pineapple. What's that? On the we, menu. We what's, have your, what's your favorite snack? <laughs> Blood. <No. laughs> oh, no. 
Uh, no, uh, he, um, uh, our, our elven loaves are uh, to die for. The what? The uh, elven loaves? Oh, okay, we'll take a few of those. T- you didn't answer the tea question. You have oranges. Oranges. Uh, oranges? Yes, we, we have, we have tea. Yeah, we have, we have. All right, carrots, oranges, uh, elven apples. loaves. Don't forget apples. those apples. Got any apples. fish? Any fish? No, he doesn't have any meat. Stop asking, Barnabas. F- fish, he <laughs> might not consider fish meat. Do you we have any fish? Asked. No. Fuck, Barnabas, <laughs> shut up. Fish is meat. <laughs> That's what I said. One of those isn't the brightest ball. You have to kill for fish. <sighs> anyway, the things I mentioned: carrots, yeah. apples, carrots, apples, uh, tea, uh, the loaves, the tea. The loaves. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you have any cookies? Do you have any cookies, pastries, besides the elven biscuits? Loaves? Well, we could, we could. I could throw some sweets in there as well. Yeah, throw some sweets. He's gonna throw some sweets in. Okay, nice. Does he have any heavy cream for that tea? Do you have any cream for the tea? Uh, I, uh no. You have any milk? No. You no. have any dairy of any kind? You no got da- cheese? There's no, no dairy. No. no, it's just fruits and vegetables and some tea. Mm. And, and some bread and break things. And some, and and some probably some, you know. Does he have any nice salts for a warm and coming bath? No, no, he definitely does. I'm not going to ask that type. Just but can you ask, question. though? Oh. I'll ask for Queen. Well, he's do you have any, <laughs> any salts for the bath? Uh, <laughs> I have salt. <laughs> That's not the, he just has regular salt. It's that could work. I don't I think don't, it's the same thing, Queenie. Are you sure? I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. How much is this going to cost? <laughs> Four copper pieces. Oh, all right, hold on. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> Give me the change. Stick out your head. <laughs> Thank you for patronizing. Just leave it outside of the door. Why are you outside the door? Gehenna's blessing. And then he turns around and uh, uh, you hear him go down. Did, I'm sorry, what did he say? <laughs> oh, he sounded like a fucking did, freak. Did, did, he, did he hear? Did he, I, I clearly understand. You would what have saying. heard him very muffled. He said something about, get, I don't know if you know what this means. Gehenna's blessing? Is that well, I, don't know, I don't know who that is, but she sounds blessing. nice. Is that draconic? Does that sound familiar? We don't know. That doesn't sound mm, Perhaps familiar. he's Galdes. Yeah. It doesn't sound draconic to me. Okay. No, but it's a pretty name. Yeah. All right, well, I don't know. We'll just, um... There are not many elves in Mammoth. I do not know much of their culture. Oh, did you see that guy's face? Oh, he scared the crap out of me when he first came around that corner. Well, it wasn't his face that scared me. It was the way he went. <laughs> yeah, it was his general and energy. I creeped around. <laughs> I think it all turned black and white. <laughs> it turned into Nosferatu for a second. <laughs> uh, what are we going to do? Uh, I don't know, but I like the idea of getting a tattoo. You all ever thought about getting one? I did get one. And no, then... I've never had a tattoo. And then it vanished. <laughs> Do you actually have tattoos? I'm covered in tattoos. Is, is there art from here? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, from here you just look blue. <laughs> He's got a fucking bunch of shit and like, oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Have any of y'all ever thought about getting tattoos, Barnabas? <laughs> There's my freshest one is the seabird right here on me chest. I, I had like a crazy one and it. it was like it was cold. You had one? It vanished. Oh. I thought it was going to stick around and it didn't. It's from the ghost. Yeah. It's like oh. a ghost tattoo. We did tattoo. the cheese rolling. I can still. Oh have yeah. You. Didn't you take? I I did the uh, the Saint Elmo's fire on you with the lightning bolts. <laughs> Wrong. <Run, run. laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? The bolt of Saint Elmo. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Uh, I just love you. Oh, oh, to bring about good God. luck. Don't you recall? <laughs> what about you, Tashan? You ever thought about tattooing any kind? That was some fine work no, I did. I don't know that it sits very well on my scales. But you could have your scale tattooed individually. It'd be kind of cool. Well, well, I don't know. I don't like pain. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. What about you, Yornir? I'm sorry, Grim Grimnor. Grimnir. Oh, isn't that what I said? No. You <laughs> <laughs> said Grimnor. No, I'm sorry, my bad. Have you ever thought about a tattoo, Grimnor? No, I have not. All right. <laughs> With my fur, it wouldn't show. What about you, well. Tack? Tack like tattoo. You have any? You don't like a tattoo for good luck to ward off, ward off evil spirits. Well, we think I'll give you a fine cloud batterman. 
Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, what? Uh, Bless you. He, he's he's Since we're surrounded by kobolds. Uh, I mean, he's wearing very little, but you don't see any tattoos on his body. No, tack no have tattoo. You want one? If I ever go get a tattoo, Tack, will you come with me? We can be tattoo buddies. Yes. All right. Oh. Tack would like that very much. No, I forgot to ask Tack what he wanted for snacks. Ow. We'll share. We'll make it work. Snacks? Yeah. Are there snacks? They're coming. <laughs> They're not here yet, buddy. I, just didn't Tack take, hungry. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't yeah. take into account, though, like, uh. yeah, it's only going to be a little bit. Well, do you like carrots? What? Carrot. Uh, oh, Tech, Tech, you're gonna love them. They're like, they're like about eight inches long. They're thick towards the base. They get thin towards the tip. They're really sweet. You just stick them in your mouth. Why do you have to describe them like that? That's. I should, oh, I even I'm watching. I haven't ever heard of someone like describe carrots in that way. That was specific. It what, just what, like what, a carrot? reverse baseball bat. It's a, it's a fleshy, it's carrot vegetable. meat. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, no. they don't for, have any meat here. Well, no, but for a vegetable, it's quite meaty. Oh, yeah, that's true. It is quite meaty. You know, Seems now sweet. that you mention it, he did make an off comment about having to kill the fish to serve meat. Almost like he was, uh, you know, against it. Mm. Wait, Vow of non-violence, perhaps. Why would he be against it? I don't know, maybe it has something to do with that, uh, the, the Gehenna goddess. Oh, I thought God. he was just saying meat is, you have to kill to make meat, so if I... you have to kill fish, it's meat. And... Right, but oh, I, exactly I just got right. the impression that he did. He seemed to be, He seemed like he didn't want to. Like he wouldn't have wanted to do that. That guy looked like he had no trouble killing people. <laughs> <laughs> when he came around, he came around. I was free. I almost shit my pants. I was for sure we were dead. That guy was a stone cold weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. No, are you kidding me? None of us. None of us. I'm serious. None of us leave this room without the body system. Not with that pervert on the <laughs> desk. <laughs> you hear? Uh, you hear? I move the floor, boys. <laughs> You hear voices rise up from the oh street God. outside. Oh, you good. can hear uh, this sort of swell of sound, cheers, uh, uh, chants almost. Uh, you can hear, princess, 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 and it gets louder and louder, and like a wave, it swings past uh, 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 and through the street, and there's a brief moment where the light coming through the window flickers as you imagine that a shadow Quickly passes overhead, oh, so and then bad. it fades. Oh, that's bad. Do I hear any? <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Oh, that is pretty wow. cool. And then you hear a um. I, I, I'll, I'll leave the the tray outside the door. Good, go away. <laughs> Thank you for the the, the, the quiet. Uh, qu do you need anything else? Go go away. No, no, but we need more stuff because attack. No, oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> we need a little. We need more snacks. <laughs> How many? Well, we we have a, a fully stocked kitchen. We have an ogre in here. I can cook <laughs> something. Did he say fully stocked? He doesn't have any meat or fish in it. That was the opposite of fully stocked. He did. I don't know. Give me ask, a... ask him what kind of things what? he can make. What do you? What, what can you fully prepare? Uh, 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 stew. Oh yeah. Tell. Wait. How do you make a stew without meat in it? How do you make a stew without meat in it? Well, you just don't put meat in it. Is it <laughs> that, <laughs> since you just don't put meat no, in it. No, that makes a it a soup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it best is a chowder. That's just a soup. <laughs> well, it's like a chili. It's kind you of can't a make chili. a. Wait, you, how are you making chili without meat? We're getting off topic. All right, we'll take some of the soup. Soup. ceviche. We'll take some of the soup. You can't make okay. ceviche we'll without, without right, shrimp right, and fish. Hold on. Wait, just give me a minute. Uh, 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 here, start giving those up. Yeah. All right, we'll take some of the soup. <clears throat> um, extra large portion, though. He's an ogre. Uh, he's big. He's, he's a... Okay. Well, didn't he say that the can rest you, of the kitchen was closed? Can you ask he him... He closed in the morning. Can you ask him if he can make... It's, it's called dynamite beef. So basically what you're going to do is... It's like you're making Mongolian beef, but instead of Mongolian sauce, you're going to sub in for dynamite sauce. You said sauce. beef. He doesn't have any beef. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just ask him anyway. Oh, what and so then what you're going to need beef. to do, though, because... Because you're near Barnabas and Tack, well, and Tashan, they've got they've got stomachs for days. <laughs> the soup bowls, yes, like the big ones, the communal soup bowls. I need you to get 
four of those. Fill those full of rice. One for each of them, okay? Have a lot and of then, money. and then instead of like the little carafes that you would use for the sauce, you're not going to do those. Tell them to get like coffee mugs or something. Fill it full <laughs> of the dynamite true. sauce. And get one for each of them as well, okay? Uh, I'm just going to need a little bowl of white rice on the side for me. Uh, and then uh, if you could go light on the green onions on mine. That I can hear nice. the lady. Just bring us a lot of soup. How much is that going to cost? I'm going to make uh, uh, some of the soup, and I'm going to make the dynamite beef, but I'm going to make it with black beans and jackfruit. <laughs> You'll love it. I'd rather starve, you sicko. I'd rather starve, you sick freak. Boy, this, is a, this is a place. This is hell. This is hell. This is a godless place. That man is a deranged man. <laughs> he must be stopped. We gotta kill the innkeeper. <laughs> so, I think that we never got his name, but I think that his... I think his name is the soup pervert. <laughs> when he comes back, when he comes back, don't right. distract me. All right. I have some questions. I'll get his name. All right, we'll get the oh, soup. Oh, we haven't asked his name yet. Oh, he's, a, oh, he's the soup pervert. Well, that's <laughs> what we just... call him behind his back. I know I know. we haven't eaten like normal food in eight months, but I really hope he brings the soup and bread bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, no we didn't way. ask him to like, do that. Man, Can you call you him just... back, Scrim? I'm not calling him back. It's I don't want to interact with him. It's could a reputable establishment. You, could you go downstairs by yourself? And no! Say, <laughs> <laughs> did, you miss, did you miss the conversation? I said, well, no one leaves this room without the body system. Well, you want me to come with you? We have to find out. Absolutely we can get the... not. If I'm leaving, he'll take a bottle of with me. He'll snap that guy in two. He can't leave the room, now with that tattoo. I'll snap it in the Someone is using their head. Well, you know what you could do? You could wear shirts long enough to cover up your tramp stamps, Graham. <laughs> You know I just like to feel the air on my midriff. <laughs> you know, when you suge suggested the tickle me Elmo's fire, I really shouldn't have obliged you. <laughs> None of that is canon. <laughs> All of that is canon. Uh, uh, Alright, alright. Uh, I'm happy to snap the soup pervert in half tomorrow. Well, I am not feeling well, even no, after no, the great no. healing that wait, just, Mr. Fire Blossom and Mr. Yornier. You, uh, 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 Grimnir. We're gonna wait for the soup. We're all gonna relax. We're not leaving this room unless we absolutely have to. And I can't think of a single reason why we would need to. All right? I really want to ask him if we can get that soup in a bread bowl. It's too late. Uh, this, this is I'll done. go. I'm not it's scared. Over. Nope. Nope. I'll walk nope, down no there by myself. No one is leaving this room. Please talk some sense into them. <clears throat> Really quick, I was just having too much fun doing the soup scene. Mm -hmm. um, when the when the shadowy wings uh, flew by, I would have run to the. <coughs> What's that? I would have run to the window to look out the window. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Really cool. Um, you immediately sprint and you uh, glance out and uh, you look down the street, and but following the voices out in this direction, heading towards the uh, uh, west, towards the uh, towards the spine, uh, you can you can see this. Gliding massive dragon, one you've seen twice before, once uh, in a storm out on a flat sheet of ice, and uh, again when you were uh, having uh, perhaps one of the most intense uh, experiences of your life, fighting an elder brain on a nautiloid ship as it climbed its way up the hull and then eventually disappeared with an artifact that you know um, you are all seeking. It is very much the same dragon. <coughs> is she going to the? Is she flying to the? Seemingly towards the gate that you crashed through. Towards the gate that we crashed through. Yes. Oh wow, that's not good. Oh. Uh, oh. So she's not going to this place. She's going to the gate. She's headed. Probably from the keep to the where the the commotion. Oh shit! It's like smog. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep, no. yep. Yeah. Oh no. We're in deep you, shit. You were here. You landed here. I would say that at this oh, point fuck. you're sort of like here. Oh, Wait, that's only as far as we really? make it. Yeah, I'm really like over here. Oh, yeah. This place is oh, enormous. No. It's enormous. Yeah, yeah. There are tens of thousands of citizens in this, uh, oh. in, in this place. Uh, just based on what uh, the half of it that you have seen. This, this place is a huge, is huge uh, um, uh, city. Is Dungeon Master? Yeah. For my visualization, mm -hmm. as everyone's calling the princess, does suddenly the like window start to ice up a little bit as she passes oh, over? As, that's and and cool. like the temperature in the room drops like 
Does that happen? I've noticed Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's snowing outside, right? But it's like when the dementors are outside of the Hogwarts Express. It would be the Hogwarts Express. I was just going to say that. This is what happens for the witches flat on my asshole. I love doing that. Uh, Can we get a timestamp on that so I can send it to Jesse? <laughs> you wait. Uh, it seems that the soup and the dynamite beef uh, <laughs> the dynamite takes some time beans. for them to actually, actually like heat up a cauldron and get cooking and get the kitchen on uh, online. So uh, quite a, a large amount of time passes, perhaps. 45 minutes to an hour before you start to hear footsteps coming up the stairs again. But you have that time and your company to enjoy talking about whatever you want to talk about this mid-morning of the day. Does that count as a short rest? I would say it counts as a short rest. Okay. Well, that's, I am going that's to use all important. of my fucking shit. If needed. I have D12s to be fair. Uh, yeah, let's take a look. I'll probably short do rest, and then <coughs> one, two, three, four. Where do you where do you see it again? Four is probably worse. Uh, manage. Short rest. So manage. Show me here. Oh, I guess I will roll D6. them until I am full. Ten. Where are my d12s? And it's plus two on every roll, right? Two Whatever your con mod is. Yeah. Okay. Three. Eleven. Great. That's pretty good. I'll yes. use one more. <coughs> Jesus Christ. 10, 11. Another 10? All right. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four. I used five. 11. Take short rest. Six. Good. Six. I will probably only eat. Well, no, I'll use maybe two more. 21. 11. It's riveting content here, fellas. Yeah. All right, um, I'm good. I'm good. I'm feeling good. As good as I can be. I used <coughs> six. Short rest, one, two, three, four, five, six. I rolled pretty hot on my uh, uh, dice. I rolled okay. <coughs> I used five as well. I'm using all of them. Fuck it. And eventually... That will heal me, thank God. How are you enjoying the snacks? Uh, they're fine. Here, give me what you brought. Uh, Ask him if he brought the soup and a bribble. He didn't it's, bring the soup it's, and a bribble. It's on a, it's on a cart. It's, it's, oh, okay, all right. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to wheel it in. No, 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 no. I'm gonna open the door. I'm gonna wheel it in. I'll give you your cart back. You're very pushy, strange green man. <laughs> not into the room. Don't let him in. The I'm not gonna let him in. The all room. right, just making sure. All right, just stand, just stand there. I understand. I'm gonna wheel the cart in. You guys, take the stuff off. All right, while they're taking the stuff off, I have a couple questions for you. One. What is your name? Nimrodel. Nimrodel? Oh, my name is uh, Albert. Albert? <laughs> well, if you want, there's a guest uh, book there. You can sign your name I and will. you can leave a message. I, I'll do so. Number two, um, what was that thing about, uh, you said something about Gehenna's blessing? Earlier, what does that mean? Is that a, is that your god? Is that the religion that you worship, Gehenna's blessing? Oh yes, yes, yes. Every one of the cabal worships the 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 cabal. Well, yes, uh, <coughs> all the elves here in Argent Oh, there's more. There's more of you. Uh, not as many as perhaps the kobolds and the others, but yes. The cabal. Okay, that's concerning. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. The last thing you you said something about having to kill for the meat. Do, do you not? Do you not eat meat? I wouldn't, no. I would never kill or want a creature to be killed. I for knew it. Food. Stupid Taishan. Yeah, when you're uh, sensitive to uh, the second veil as I am. The second veil? What is that like? The afterlife. To death itself. Oh, all right. You don't know very much about uh, people, do you? Well, what was that? Uh, here's your tray. Take this thing. Get this card out oh, of here. Oh, thank I'm you, not thank you. Get out of here. All right. Th it. Thank you. Oh, wait. How much do I owe you? Another eight copper. Son of a. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> here's another silver piece. I need change. Ah, give me two more. Give me two more. Okay, thanks. Go away. Ah. <laughs> you hear him departing down the hallway, and you feel that he is left. Suddenly, there is a gray heron gone. Similar size to Queenie, it's eating it, he's wanting one of the carrots. What a Nimrod! <laughs> <laughs> no. 
That's you. <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> What's up, Jack? <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, okay. <clears throat> uh, he gets ripped out of uh, What was his name? I've already forgotten. Nim Nimrodel. Nimrodel. Well, his name is Nimrodel. Mm -hmm. He is opposed to killing <clears throat> because he's very sensitive to something about the second veil beyond the other worlds. He's sensitive to death itself. And... Oh, the Gehenna thing was his religion. Yeah, well, who, who would have known? Right. I mean, I guess we guessed it. We figured it out. Well, I guess that means we're safe here tonight. No, he also mentions something about all of the elves in this town being part of a cabal. <laughs> Whatever that means. Oh, well, I'd love to go to a cabal. Yeah, I don't think it's like that. Oh. I, it sounded a lot more menacing when he said it. He was oh. like, the cabal. I think everything sounds menacing when he says it, though. That's true. That's fair. That's very fair. It is, is it really a cabal? Like, when he, when he said ha, he was like, ha. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good impression. Yeah, it was really uncomfortable. Uh, eat up, Tech. What are you doing in here? We told you to leave. All <laughs> 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 oh, I know is the soup pervert. He's back. He emerges oh from the God, they got <laughs> He like comes up out of the mattress. Uh, Tech uh, it doesn't care for the dynamite beef. Uh, no one I, I'm going to take whatever, like, you know, food, oranges or mm -hmm. bread with butter. I don't even know if he's fucking butter. Uh, and uh, I'll sit below the uh, large painting with the two eyeholes cut out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just, like, eat. It's hard. Uh, the, the room warms with the um, temperature of your bodies as you all uh, stay in there. And it starts to get cozier and cozier. And you start to relax and relax as you take what nourishment you can from what snacks you prefer. And the... Um, uh, I, it, it strikes you how this is the first time in, in a long time where you haven't felt the pressure of danger from any direction. Even though you know that just outside the door, uh, there is, uh, it are thousands of people who will think of you as uh, strangers, as perhaps a threat that might want uh, uh Answers regarding your origins, answers regarding uh, uh, the nature, uh, the fact that you have tack with him, and that almost certainly the wheels uh, uh, are turning. Uh, as time progresses, uh, what the princess was doing, heading towards the same place that you crashed, uh, starts to put an idea in your head that there is, um, uh, that rumors are spreading, information is spreading. The. <clears throat> All of, pushing those thoughts aside, however, you uh, find yourselves um, able to relax for a moment. You no longer uh, underneath, uh, in a tunnel underneath, perhaps uh, uh, tens of thousands of tons of, of rock underneath the mountains, traveling in uh, uh, an ice troll uh, 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 civilization, for lack of a better term. Uh, you're no longer in the very southern wastes of the um, uh, of Drakkar on an, uh, on the ocean. Even you're no longer in uh, the strange space that you found yourself at that lighthouse. Uh, this is a this is, for lack of a better word, is civilization. It feels like almost uh, uh, something that you have been missing, something you're familiar with, with the exception of the strange, obviously, um, experience that you had in the fake city of Ogreton. We should rest. We do not know when we will get another opportunity. And I think it would be like one of those things where you're so exhausted and you can stay up so long and then all of a sudden your body realizes, yeah. okay, I can rest, mm -hmm. and it just catches it's up with you. Like That's, a fucking train yeah, train. With the adrenaline, it kind yep. of it, yep. it, it is out of your body. Had you pushed yourself another half day, I would have had exhaustion rolls yeah. for everyone ready to go. Uh, and so I would, I don't know how many beds are in this single room, uh, but you I said would, it was a suite. I would try to find, uh, you know, one of the beds that would fit my height and uh, settle in. It definitely feels like you could have bought two rooms. Um, there are two beds. They are large, but it will require um, uh, uh, folks to sort of sleep on some of the chairs and the couches uh, just off to the side. There is uh, your own personal ensuite bathroom uh, that you can use. Um, the, there's uh, not hot wow. water, but uh, definitely um, uh, cold water that's warm enough, to not the ice, uh, that you can use to freshen up um, these kinds of 
luxuries. If, if I feel like there's any like nails or if the wood is sturdy enough, I would probably try to just take the tent or whatever I have and just make a hammock. And oh. I'm, I'm fine just hammering in nails into the walls or if there's sconces. The craftsmanship here is good. Um, <laughs> this doesn't feel like a very new building. It feels very old, and yet it is still standing. And so you are able to um, uh, make a hammock in one of the corners of the room, and uh, you feel almost like on a ship, though. It lacks that nice uh, uh, waving motion. I don't feel quite right not sleeping in a hammock, so you all can take the bed, and I'll, I'll fashion myself a hammock and... I'll, I'll eat whatever I feel until I'm full, if there is enough food, and then I'll just pass out. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll sit up. As soon as I get my hammock, I'll say, I well, suppose that uh, we really should keep a watch, even though we are in an inn. We well, still don't fully trust Nimrod the Super. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably couldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say his name was Nimrodel or Nimtodel? <laughs> <laughs> Nimrodel. Don't ask questions you don't want answers to, you on here. Alright, I'll take first watch. I'm not tired yet. I'll take last watch and get a head start. Oh, I guess I'm not cooking breakfast. I have to ask. <sighs> he said that the kitchen was closed in the morning. I'd be happy to take a watch after Scrim. Then wake me up when we'll you take are last ready. Watch. You going to sleep? Yeah, we're, we're tired. Noon? Yeah, well, it's been a very long time for us. Before we met you, we went through a lot. I'm pretty bored. sure I could sleep a full 24 hours, so... Oi, say true. What's wrong, Tech? Tech, not tired. Well, that's okay, because one of us is going to stay up the entire time, so you'll have someone to talk to. Okay. We can even play games when it's my turn. Okay. Oh, I'll teach right. you liar's dice. I'm sure you'll be quite good at it. Okay. <laughs> need to find some dice first, anyway. <laughs> good night, everyone. Good night, Scrim. And you endeavor to enjoy a long to. rest. Um, who takes first watch? Me. Okay. It is Boop, Boop, Taishan. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I play oh, a game with your, I play a game with Tack for my uh, for my um, watch. I play a game with Tack called Sit in Front of the Door and Don't Let Anyone In. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're winning, Tack! <laughs> yeah, I convinced Tack that he's winning the game. He's so much better than me at this. I, I can't believe it. in front of the door so no one can get in. <laughs> Uh, okay, Scrim. Uh, everyone is uh, either snoring or uh, sleeping uh, very loudly, and uh, Tack is uh, aggressively endeavoring to win. What do you do with your hour plus time? Uh, do we have a window? We've got a window. Yeah. Got windows. I would probably like peek out the window, see what's going on. I'd probably. Uh... I, I probably wouldn't be able to get that guy out of my head. He'd be in my head right <laughs> free. <laughs> and I'd be, I'd just be thinking about the things he said and like, you know, wondering about the cabal. You don't see any of these other um, elf creatures walk up and down the street. The occasional times you, you start people watching more and more as the hour gets longer and longer. And you, but you do see contingents of kobolds running up and down the streets every once in a while. Uh, you do see uh, uh, the occasional go, uh, 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 goliath or pair of goliaths uh, moving forward, clearly heading to market for some reason, or perhaps coming to this district for a meal or something along those lines. Um, you do see dwarves uh, uh, walking back and forth. Um, and uh, it, the dwarves uh, uh, strike you as very strange. Whatever dwarves you've experienced uh, in your life, these uh, have many of the same characteristics in terms of their dress, and in terms of uh, their stature, in terms of their uh, uh, braided, big, bushy beards. Um, but you can plainly see that there's almost this like deep blue or dark purple uh, skin to, to, to them. What you can see, like a big knobby nose on the front of their face, it almost looks like uh, they've gotten very cold, very, very cold. Um, but uh, watch, watching them go by, you also see um, these very strange uh, orc creatures, unlike any that you've ever seen, not adorned in huge uh, uh, metallic armor or carrying huge weapons, but themselves with uh, tall staffs that uh, uh, have hanging uh, ropes and trinkets and uh, uh, these variety of things, uh, almost like uh, if uh, you're near. Were, were an orc, and you, you take in these details and sort of start to saturate yourself in the culture of the city, those are but the races that you see in these few tribes and clans. 
And then I wake up whoever's turn is. I go to sleep. You wake up your near. Hey, wake up. <clears throat> right, when you get some time, take a look outside. There's some weird looking people out there. Yes, I will. Also, I made up a game with Tack called Sit in front of the door and don't let anybody in. So just keep playing with him. Tell him he's winning. He won't move. All right. Good night. Tack, all time champion. <laughs> well done, Tack. You stay right there. And I'll look out the window. And you take in these same fresh details. Um, you seem to be uh, across the street from a. I have it right here. Um, you do seem to be uh, uh, across from a delicacies um, shop, a storefront that seems to have uh, uh, breads and cheeses and uh, all sorts of exotic mushrooms hanging drying in the in the in the window. Um, but just as I described to uh, Andy. Uh, what Scrim observed, you would see the same kind of foot traffic moving up and down the street. And the hour or so passes uneventfully, however long we divide up a uh, six to eight hours uh, uh, period of time, depending a on... over an hour and a half. Each, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in, in order to ensure that everyone got like a long rest, you could still say that you sleep for 24 hours, and if you want to wake up tomorrow morning, that's fine. But for these first uh, uh, essential hours of sleep, you wait. And, and then, then maybe like 15 or 30 minutes before my watch ends, I'm gonna just sort of like, uh, tack, may you move aside just very briefly? <clears throat> he like sits up, he's been sitting almost cross-legged uh, uh, like a big baby, and he, he gets up, his, he has to lean down in order to not collide with the ceiling, even as high as it is, and then uh, uh, gets out of your way. Um, and as he does that, I'm just gonna basically like, very quickly open the door and look outside. <gasps> you do that, and you look outside and back and forth, and then... Oh, I hold still over my head, by the way. There doesn't appear to be anyone in the hallway. <clears throat> Stay right here. You fool. <laughs> I'm gonna just slowly walk down the stairs, keep my hood over my head, and just try to get a sense of like, Keep my head shadowed, but take a look. I want to see if I can find this this Nimrodel guy. Uh, you come downstairs, and now that it is afternoon and the kitchen is open, uh, you actually see that um, if you made it to the first floor, uh, that there would be patrons. Uh, a, a handful of uh, creatures have walked into the store, and Nimrodel is, uh, with an eagerness that is very strange, um, making sure that they are all enjoying his newest recipe, Dynamite Jackfruit. <laughs> with beans. With with black beans. Nightmare. Um I would have taken a I, I, do I have some money at all? You would have to tell me. I didn't track your inventory to that. Degree. Let me check my equipment real quick. I know I certainly have no gold. No coin. Um I do not. I would have, if you think that I would be able to I get I vaguely into... recall that you and Queenie might have had We had platinum, platinum pieces. pieces. And I gave that to Scrim, which I, I don't know what you did with. I don't recall having platinum pieces, because I, the last I had, I had 200 pieces of gold, I dumped 100 of them in a recent session, and kept the other 100. Because um, some of my material, some of my spells require gold for components. Mm. Um, I don't... I don't remember. I mean, I remember you offering me the platinum, but I don't. I, I don't have my book on me. I, I don't ever remember writing it down in my book. I see. Like I can picture my inventory in my mind, and I don't. I never wrote down one platinum because it would have taken up a different slot. Like the one hundred, each one hundred gold pieces took up a slot. Right. And so to hold extra food, I dumped the hundred gold, and another, you know, a single platinum would have taken up. Um, I would walk down and I would try to uh, find, I will try to sort of motion to Nimrodel with my face still covered. Uh, if you have a moment. Uh, 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 just, just one. He, he, he finishes taking the orders and I'll be with you in uh, uh, one flash of a second. Uh, uh, please. Uh, and he runs over. Uh, yes, uh, how, how, how can I be of service? Is everything uh, 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 up to standard? Yes, I wanted to thank you for your hospitality earlier, given my eclectic 
band of misfits, so to speak. And uh, just hopefully understanding is you are your own member of a cabal, I hear. Your discretion is key for men like you and me, is it not? Oh, yes. Well, again, thank you, and I wanted to give you a blessing. May Gehenna's blessing be with you. I want to pass him something. I don't know if he would reach out his hand. Um, he would instantly, uh, uh, very graciously. I would sort of grab his hand and put a stone in his hand. Uh, and when I grab his hand, I'd like to cast Second Sight on him. <gasps> Second Sight. It's an ice bound spell. It's oh, a charisma oh saving boy. throw. Rich. You did this. Uh, they say I have your gold. And so I just yeah. checked and I do. Yeah. I do. 18. Fuck. I think 18 passes. Wow. Um, what does second sight do? Can you read it all? Yeah, what does it do? You touch a creature and attempt to use another creature's vision in addition to your own. An unwilling creature may attempt a charisma saving throw to resist the spell. While this spell gives you no control over the subject, each time you come and do a con, uh, you can basically transfer it. Uh, I can basically, I could have seen through his eyes for oh, an hour. An unwilling creature, maybe he likes voyeurism. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Would, would he be would he be unwilling? Does he know that it's being cast? Yeah, does he know that it's being cast? I would not met. I would not. I, mean, I don't think he would. He would. Well, he feels he knows a blessing is coming. So if he's yeah. expecting a blessing, he, he knows I'm giving him a blessing, and I'm placing a stone with a rune that's wristed into it, uh, in his hand. Okay. Just as a as How? a from one holy man to another. With that. Idea, make a deception check, and we'll see if he willingly accepts this. That's really good. That's do you want to? Do you want to uh, add, add twists? twists? Five. Let's add five. Oh my god! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the twists. I You're like need- this system. Is pretty neat. I really, it's really like it. Right. It's starting really like like to a Mormon. Um, shoot, where was I going? Five twists. Ah. Thank you so much for the bits. What is it? Thirteen. Oh, thank God you used the five twists. Sorry, let me just quickly. What's the max amount of twists you can use? I mean, all probably. I don't know if you have a cap. We decided not to set a cap initially because the idea is that it'll force scarcity and like we just won't have a bunch to use. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm. But if we feel that we need to add a cap, we certainly can. Should have gone plus 20. Um. I was hoping I'd get lucky, you know. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, we did it. With a 13, yeah. I'm going to re-roll. Okay. Whoa. And it's Insight? it's just somatic. So what, you, what do you say to cast the spell? I, w- I would say, um, what did the I say? Blessings uh, blessing. blessing of Gehenna. Blessing of Gehenna. Oh, yeah. um, I'm basically trying to, to rhyme back the blessing that he said to what us. What a wonderful blessing. As he left. He accepts this, uh, the stone and you feel the magic pass from your skin into his and suddenly you are looking at your own hood as the second sight spell oh. takes an effect. And he seemingly unknowing the, the nature of the blessing. Uh, thank you. Uh, what is uh, oh, oh, I, may I ask? Uh, uh, is, is this uh, Gehenna's blessing or is it uh, from one holy man to the other, the land blesses you, as Gehenna does. And without a word, I'm, without another word, I'm gonna basically try to turn and leave. I'm going to bring you some more dynamite jackfruit later on. Thank you, thank you, sir. And I'll go up the stairs, and I will uh, wake up. Who would be next? Barnabas, maybe? Or, no, no Taishan. Yeah, I'm going to wake up Taishan uh, without saying anything, and I would go to sleep. But as I lay there, I'm not actually sleeping. I use my action. My my eye is glowing, and I'm just watching for the you next You are just hour. watching. Um, we'll describe what you see momentarily. Sure. Mm. Taishan, you are um, groggily woken <laughs> by... I'm going to be scarred forever. Oh. Uh, by Yornir, and you find yourself for the hours or two uh, uh, stuck with Tack, having to uh, uh, while away the time to make sure that your companion's slumber goes undisturbed. 
I think the first thing I would do is I would go to the um, wash basin with the water that's not quite warm, uh, but not cold. Uh, and I think like that, like that first shower after a day of travel, mm -hmm. you just kind of feel like you have this layer of a road on you. And I'd go to the wash basin mm -hmm. and just take my my tunic off. You have the unusual privilege of being able to like hold the side of the basin and warm the water even. Mm. So instead of what most folks would have, which is the, the very low room temperature water, almost cold, you would be able to actually get it to the point where you could see the steam rising off the slick surface and... I rub it in my hands, across my face. Maybe even from not having fully healed yet as I start to wash my arms, uh, a little, like the water would start to turn mildly red uh, as streaks of blood uh, would would wash off of me. Uh, and then I'd, I'd take just a washcloth and put it, if there's a washcloth, on the, the back of my neck. And, and maybe for the first time since uh, we've been in Drakkar, feel like internally warm. Uh, uh, shattering just a little bit of the the cold that has probably really deeply set within me, uh, and just kind of trying to retain a or, or get to a space of of comfort again. You do that. Do you do anything else with your time before um, you wake? I can't remember if it was Barnabas or Queenie, but it's Barnabas is last. He, he's last. Um, I would also go to the window but i would try and look towards the i would be thinking about the path of the princess of wrath and try and look towards the the gate uh and just kind of like not even necessarily looking to like try and see if i see anything over there but just wondering uh what comes next it's mid-afternoon now and you can see very plainly the um uh, sun hitting the water. This extremely th uh, uh, reflective surface um, almost creates a double image of the island uh, and its reverse. The keep above it, it's many, many spires. You can see um, uh, it's starting to clear up the fog of morning and you can see um, an alive city, all these different buildings of different shapes all in, uh, in, 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 across the way from your vantage point. Uh, what, what limited sight you can see, uh, and you just sort of take in the horizon. I would spend the remainder of my time just looking out, surveying, and, and thinking. Deep in thought. Tack doesn't bother you. He seems extremely fixated by the door for some reason until finally you... Ra, who, who, who do you wake? Queen. 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 During this, uh, the first hour of your time, um, your near, you uh, enter an almost meditative state. It's still restful. You're not moving or or, or using many calories. Let's say uh, what few you got from the vegetables and snacks, but uh, you are experiencing the life of the ultimate host. A uh, person who seems um, uh, eager to please, eager to please, and then some. And uh, they they are taking orders. They are um, uh, 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 rushing back, making sure that the food is just perfect in their mind, uh, uh, making sure that uh, everyone feels heard. Uh, never, never, never faltering or taking a break. And you are just starting to feel like the spell uh, uh, is um, uh, 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 wearing off. Um, wishing that you could hear any of the conversations you uh, during that uh, you you are feeling that it uh, that it is just beginning to fade as the person goes back and seem seemingly takes their first break. They go not just pass through the kitchen but into a back room, <laughs> and in there there's a myriad of candles, all of which uh, uh, burn with almost a black light. And in the center of a desk adorned with uh, uh, the usual managerial uh, tools that would be required to run an inn or a lodge, uh, in the center there seems to be a thick tome. And on top, the uh, totem or sculpture, a very heavy, dark stone cr uh, creature, it is very evidently of some sort of a hound or dog. 
and the you see watch as the hand of the elf oh. reaches and grabs that uh, uh, figure and moves it aside, and you watch as he flips open through pages of written notes, entry, long entry, 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 until finally finding an empty blank space, not very far into the book, perhaps a third of the way through, and the hand writes in Elvish. Do you speak Elvish? Oh my god, please. Please. There's please. no way. Please speak Elvish. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'll say... Unlikely. Uh, but is it, is it, it's not skills, it's... No, it's under languages and provisions. Oh. There's no way. At least, unless... Uh, Common, were... Druidic, Dwarvish, Elvish, and Giant. Oh! oh! Let's go! And you... Um, see the, ha- the the script ri- uh, written out and um, help somebody with their order. Clarified a point. They seem to be writing down every thing that they assisted people with in excruciating detail. Interesting. Until uh, the hand sort of stops and sort of rests. And when the ink seemingly has dried, it turns the pages all the way to the very end, and you can see that the last entry, as opposed to all of these empty lines where more and more, uh, presumably, of these favors would have been written out in in detail, the last line simply reads the end. And the book closes. You see the um, figure get put back on there, and then uh, turning and almost like at a sprint to rush to uh, 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 find the next person to serve. That uh, vision fades. Strange, that's where we'll take another quick break. Strange oh. fellow. Most of you are asleep, Yornir, you are uh, perplexed by what you've seen, but you drift off back into a slumber. Yes, and Taishen, you wake Queenie uh, and take your uh, position, her position, uh, uh, in bed, swapping spaces as tight as this uh, suite is, given that there are six of you, and find yourself quickly passing out uh, after your refreshing time on watch. Queenie, you have uh, the watch to spend. I'll head straight over to Tech. Tech, what are you doing? Playing game. What game are you playing? Watch door. Who told you about this game? Skirm. Skirm did? <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Skirm I mean, that... and Williams say watch door. <laughs> That sounds Skirm like something. Skirm and Williams. <laughs> that's, that's that does funny. sound like something Skirm would do. Uh, you want you want to spend some time with me because we don't we don't need to play watch door anymore. You won. Skirm's asleep. He I lost. Won? Yeah, you won. I'm really proud of you, t- Tech. <laughs> tech win all games. Yeah, well, you want to spend some time together, get to know each other. Yes. All right. Why don't you tell me a few things about yourself? What do you like to do in your free time, Tech? Eat. All right, you want this apple? And I'll throw him an apple. Oh, you're just gonna... <laughs> you're just gonna smell that whole... Th- okay. It, it's, it, it sounds like a walnut breaking. <laughs> you watch, like, the entire <laughs> apple get down his throat. Um, he, uh, you can hear one crushing chew, and then he swallows... <clears throat> apple. Acceptable. All right, well... Let's just let's just spend some time together, and I'm just going to spend the hour just asking him random questions and teach him how to braid hair. He talks um. about his time in the city. Um, he remembers vaguely the details of what would have been a, a, a life of uh, endeavoring to uh, climb the social ladder, uh, the things that were so uh, important to him when they were big brain ogres, and how uh, even though uh, he misses some of that life and the luxuries that came with it, um, he feels uh, happy and free. Uh, you do play some games with him. It's very difficult to teach him. I teach him like rock, paper, scissors. Right, right, right. And I just let him win every time regardless. Go on go or? So rock, paper, scissors, shoot. And then on shoot, you're going to do either rock, paper, or scissors with your hands. All right, you ready? Rock, Rock, paper, paper, scissors, scissors, shoot. shoot. You won. You want to go again? Yes. 
Rock, paper, Rock, scissors, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. You won. <laughs> we just did that for an hour. Mastermind. And uh, you play games until you realize that enough time has probably passed for uh, Barnabas to take final. I action. have to go wake up Barnabas. Queenie He's nice. really. Well, thank you, Tax. Ta- nice. You. Barnabas is really good at watch door, don't let anyone in. And he will tell Skirm if you're not vigilant. You know what vigilant means? I have had sex. Can <laughs> 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 we turn into the meme of that guy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe there's something you can teach. No, Skirm. thank you. Well, Queenie. <laughs> in the meantime, why don't you go ahead and take a Nightmare. seat in front of that door and you you play that game and make sure you beat Barnabas, all right? Okay. All right. I believe in you, buddy. I'm going to pat him on the back and then I'm going to walk over and wake up Barnabas. Tack fuck. <laughs> My name is Tack. Tack's like Christian and Grey. I fuck. He's like Christian Grey in Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't make gag. love. I fuck. I fuck. Hard. Give me, give Tack the cat gag. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Barnabas, you feel a a, a, a paw-like hand wake you up, Uh, and uh, you're you're swinging in a hammock. It it almost feels like you're back on a ship as you stare up at a uh, a dark wood uh, ceiling, and uh, uh, suddenly you realize and remember where you are. Good morning, uh, Barnabas. I'm having an incredibly pleasant dream, and I look very peaceful, and I'm muttering uh, to myself, and suddenly I kind of jolt up. (laughs) Good morning. No one tried to break in? No. Uh, Tex playing a game that Skirm, hey. the goblin, taught him how to play. It's Aye. called Watch Door, Don't Let Anyone In. Aye. As long as you tell him he's winning, he'll Aye. keep doing it. All right. All right. Thank you, Miss March. Good night. Get some sleep. Now I'm just going to go back to bed. You do? I'll crawl into the hammock. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can picture the hammock like this with like one ear flopped over it, <laughs> yeah, like this, exactly and like right. you can see some toes on the other side. <laughs> Dang, I really suppose I'll join you in your game. I'll sit down next to him, cross my legs. I win. You no, you lose. I don't know about that, Tack. Oh, you've been around a lot longer than you have, lad. I've watched many a door, many a horizon. Think you can beat old Barnabas Dreadwake? Well, we wait, Tack. Have you ever heard the tale of the seven voyages of Trothak the Shark Puncher? <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> oh, well, you have it, man. Well, allow me to elaborate in extreme detail. I will go and I will. Uh, I will elaborately tell him about all seven voyages of Trothak the Shark. Oh, you've never heard of the Gear Wars? Boy, do I envy you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He's uh, actually struggling to win uh, Watch the Door uh, by the the second tale. Very quickly, you enwrap him in this uh, fantastical tale. Uh, I am confident that Barnabas would be a terrific storyteller. And with all of your embellishments being what it is, the hour passes very quickly, and you are able to... Um, go from sea voyage to sea voyage. And in that final emerald streak, Trothak the Shark Puncher joined his ancestors on the Fiddler's Green. It's time to wake everyone up. Good story. By the way, you lose. I saw you gaze off to the corner of the room while I haven't kept my eyes off the door. Screw is just ripped He's like crazy. He's like fucking Mr. Hyde and fucking League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picking up people, fucking yeah. uh, puny Triton. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, no, Tech actually gets up. Uh, you can see he's disgruntled. He kicks the bed, which he slides kills, across the... Bugs the bugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you, right. you're, you're all awoken by his uh, uh, screams of uh, failure, and uh, he uh, pulls a sheet over himself and slumps into the bed. Tech, who hurt you? Tech loses watch door. Well, wait, but you... No talk about it. You got second place, buddy. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the next one behind first. That's really good. Scrim always says the second place is the first loser. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> well, I may have said that, but what I also say, too, is that it wouldn't be fun if you won every time. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, otherwise, mm. why gamble or play games? Back win every game. All right. Well, God, we're so close. And he, you can hear very loud snoring coming from him minutes later. He probably needed to sleep, though, to be fair. He, he did Skirm seem a at him looking grumpy. at that door for a good ten hours. <laughs> yeah. And it's night. Nighttime has emerged. And uh, looking out the window, you can see the lit lanterns and uh, lights that adorn the city. Uh, much less foot traffic uh, this close to the lake. And that strange eggs-like smell still pervades the air. Uh, even in your room, though, it is muted. Uh, but you can see, uh, just as Tai Shen was looking uh, uh, sort of across the lake, uh, the um, sparkling lights of many other dwellings and buildings and structures and you can see lights in the windows of the keep uh, and its many spires. And five of you are all there confronting what do you do next? Scream. Yes? Produce your coin. What? Why? The lucky one. I would like to see it. <gasps> well, what are you going to do with it? You, okay? you like... can't just tell me to do stuff. I'd like to <laughs> examine it. Are you sure you want to? Uh, you know, the last guy who touched it, he's been horrifically cut for the rest of time. It's me. <laughs> yes, I would like to see it. All right. Mm. Last chance. Mm. I just stick my hand out. Yeah. Boom, boom. I examine it. I want to see if this bears any resemblance to anything I saw in the book or the totem on top of the book, uh, if the aesthetic feels similar. Um, because just because it's a hound doesn't necessarily mean it's the same hound, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know. Oh. Could, it could be any hound. <laughs> you know, a lot I mean? of hounds, a lot of hounds. A lot of hounds there. in the world, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It could have been any soup. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> One moment. Where's the brass bottle cap best? I don't have the description immediately available to me, so I'll tell you what I remember from memory, and if it's inconsistent with earlier descriptions, I apologize. That's fine. However, on one side, it is perfectly smooth. Uh, rather than having a, um, uh, a face on it like the sides of uh, uh, gold coin uh, might have on both, uh, one side is uh, uh, smoothed almost like a uh, blade or uh, like a mirror, <coughs> something that you'd be able to look into and see your own reflection. You can see your golden reflection when you look at that side. And flipping it to the other side, uh, you see the um, uh, image of a very strange creature. Um, uh, it's almost a, 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 a demonic creature. That's what I remember as well. Here you are. Thank you. The soup part of Earth worships some kind of dog. I thought I should let you know. What? What do you mean, worship some kind of dog? Yeah, I peered through his eyes last night, or I guess earlier today. And in his back room, he has a large tome written in Elvish. <coughs> with uh, some sort of logbook. <coughs> on top of it sat a stone idol or totem. Of some kind of dark hound. Mm. Perhaps not unsimilar from your friend. That's concerning. Ah. So if you wish to sneak back there and steal it, I would not stop you, uh, but... Why? Why, why would you think that I want to steal that? 
Well, but you want you want to steal most things. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want to steal that. Why that not? No value to me. I, I, plus, I don't want to. I don't want to touch any of that stuff with a forty foot pole. I'm already cursed to hell and back six ways to Sunday. All nine levels of it. Gotta be. Come on. Or maybe to Gehenna and back. That what is Gehenna a place and not a person? I don't know. But they keep mentioning it. He said it was his religion. At the end of the book, it said <clears throat> the end. Very ominously. Well, well, that's that's what the end of every book says. Most books have endings, right? This is not some kind of storybook. What kind of book was it, Mr. Yurnir? <clears throat> it was an eldritch tome. It looked... It, Frankly, the his entire back room looked a bit like Spencer's gifts. <laughs> <laughs> well, even the electric orb, eh? Do you remember him With reaching the... out and like, fucking <laughs> charges, hitting his fingers? There was, a, there was a lava lamp, right? I even saw the penis draw. <laughs> there was one of those spin displays, like, oh, I'm 40 now, over the hill. <laughs> That's actually there was one of those poster <laughs> catalog things yes. that were metal frames that you could flip to. Oh god, there's no way that anyone here is old enough to remember the fucking poster <laughs> fucking things. Holy shit. Is that no longer universal? Third I don't set. think so. I don't there's, think no there's no way. There's no way. There's simply no way. Who fuck sells posters anymore? Alright, let's assume for a second that it's related. Uh, wh wh why would you think stealing it would have any good outcome? You could learn more about the nature of your curse if you care to. Uh, or it could put me in some the bad graces of some really bad people. This is also true. It is a risk. I wanted to let you know and be upfront about what I saw. Well, this is I, all. No, you're right. I appreciate it. I'm just not sure what we can do about it. Tricky. I mean, uh, to be fair, even if we wanted to steal it, night would be the time to do it. But if that's his like quarters, you know, I'm not going to get in there. You think he's a... A Dracula? No, I just think he sleeps in there in that creepy Spencer's gift room. <laughs> mm. Think he hangs upside down by his feet? Uh, maybe. I, I, who am I to judge? Mm. Lots of gnomes and mushrooms. Yeah, and well, snails I mean, <laughs> that's the uh, the sailors that I would sail with. We usually call those kinds of uh, places specialty establishments, if you catch my meaning. Ah. They charge a premium. So you're saying that he was logging what he was doing to help. And then at the end of the book, it said the end. Yes. But there was blank up until that point. Yep. Yes, I believe. You think that means when he's done cataloging all of his good deeds, he dies? Oi, that was my guess, Queenie. Or maybe he is similarly cursed and he's released from it. Why would it say the end, though? Wouldn't it say, like, you're free? The end of your curse. Feels more like the end of your life. Oh, yeah, and especially it's because it's it's coupled with him looking behind a door like this. <laughs> you know seems, what I mean? He seems so excited to help, to to add more into the book. Well, would, would he be rushing towards maybe, his Maybe. Uh, think about it like this. If you had been cursed to provide services to people for year after year after year, and you've been doing it for thousands of years, maybe... Wouldn't you welcome the sweet embrace of death? Not if it was serving tea. <laughs> That's fair. All right, I don't know then. I uh, wasn't on board <clears throat> until you suggested there might be a way out of this curse. The problem is, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life helping people. That's pathetic. <laughs> I don't think you should steal the book, Scrim. Tricking the figure out of the coin is how you were cursed in the first place. You're yeah, right. That's true. You're right. Stealing the book could double curse you. <sighs> Would you like me to do it? No, no. I think what? that's only going to make things worse for me. Y you think maybe we should just talk to him and ask him? I was thinking about it, but then he's going to be like, how'd you know about my creepy Spencer's gifts room? <laughs> I'm going to be like, well, I don't really know. I don't have a good way to explain tell him this. It, tell him Were you saw spying no, on no, me? No, I got it. The <laughs> I got it. You tell him it came to you in a dream. That you two must be connected. Because you also have a dog. That's not a bad idea. I don't know how much I want to tell this guy about how cursed what? I really am. You don't have to. You can just say you've seen a dog stalking just... you for a while, and you happen to have a dream, and you think they're 
they're connected and I see what he'll tell you. tell him about a dream and make that up and not okay. even tell him about the dog yet unless there's a reason to. All right. I mean, what if he kidnaps me and does some horrific cabal experiments on me and the next thing you know, I'm, I get turned into a leather book, if you know what I'm saying. Well, at least <laughs> he's not an alien. Some he's not an alien? Soup. No. Because with that tattoo on your back, they'd know exactly where to probe you. That's well, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. I don't know about this, guys. No, you neither do I. I really don't want to talk to that guy anymore. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's inevitable. I think probably he'll check on us before he I, turns in for the night. I could tell him I had the dream. Uh, I should probably do it. No, I agree. But, I mean, if you're feeling cowardly about it, yeah, I'd be happy well, to do it. You know, it. it's just kind of the way things are. I know. We could also just move through the districts under the cover of darkness. We could also just not find out anything about it at all. And just pretend like you don't know. You know, avoidance. Here's the thing. Yeah. Tai Shen makes a good point. It's only a matter of time before they find us. Especially the... The queen. And then princess. And then we're in trouble. We're in real trouble. I thought we wanted to go see her. Mm, I don't know. We want what she has. The Hexature Armament. I think we were trying to avoid detection. Well, I don't know if this is the sort of place, but I've... I've, uh... Uh, gotten shore leave at strange ports with sorcerers and priests having chokers and bangles with gems that could change their person. I think they would have anything like that here that we could procure so we don't have to worry about sneaking around like vermin. Build rats. Well, and instead perhaps walk about like goliaths or dwarves or not elves. Uh, or kobolds. <laughs> And the light, so we don't have to be so terrified. Yeah, I agree. I do want to go back to your point, though. I think he was the first person who saw us and didn't immediately freak out about it. Oh, yeah, that's true. How did you look at him? Oh. <laughs> but, but that's my point. He probably deals with something similar to us. So, talking to him about the dream you had... You can maybe get him on our side, and maybe he knows some kind of... If, if they're having some underground cabal, maybe he knows secret tunnels, or ways to go about unnoticed, or different ways we could sneak around. Maybe it could be helpful for our subterfuge. I know I know you don't like when I make a good point, Scrim. No, I just don't want to talk to him. Is it because his breath smells? It's everything about him. It's just a vibe. It's a whole thing, you know? It's well, just, it's a whole thing. It is, it is true. If he, if he truly worships the, the creature that stalks you, he might think that you have some relation to that. He might, he might seek to become an acolyte of yours. That, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> I do not need a guy like that following me around, all right? I got enough problems as it is. It might not be bad if we had some kind of cabal that responded to you. All yeah. right, Are well... You saying that he might be able to be brought in as some sort of prophesied savior? Or some sort of one who was foretold? Blessed by the god that the, the dog that they that they worship and serve and might be able to control the cabal. All of this feels like a very, 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 very short cut to sacrifice. Ah. I don't hate that idea, Mr. Fox. If anybody could spin that tale, it would be Scrim. Alright. I say true. I'm leaving it up to Yornium. Talk to the guy or we leave under the cover of darkness. I care not. Great. It is your curse, Scrim. Yeah, well, if it was my choice, I'd say we let's shake a leg and get out of this place. Then we will do just this. I think that our only shot here, the only lead that we have, tax no help, no offense, tax, is this soup pervert. <laughs> All right, can we stop okay. calling him the soup pervert? <laughs> At this certain point, it's just like we're projecting a lot, you know? Uh, we gotta, we gotta tone oh, it back on the soup pervert. Speaking of talk. perverts. <laughs> 
while y'all were sleeping, Tack told me he's had sex before. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, all right. He is a strapping young lad, I suppose. Anyway, is this is a surprise. What do I mean? Well, it? no, it's not a surprise to me. I just I asked him if he knew what a certain word meant, and he said, Well, I've had sex. <laughs> we have to talk about Tack having sex. <laughs> I don't think we have to. We definitely. Well, don't I mean, if we're gonna to talk, talk about it. perverts, I feel like we should get it all out out there. Tex clearly a pervert. A loud fart emanates from where Tex is sleeping. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go knock on his door. That's it. Oh, I think that's a good idea, here. Mr. Stephens. I can't stay here and ask about perhaps magical trinkets and relics and things that can have magical properties where the uh, sorceresses and, okay. and dark priests live. Do you want us to come with you? If you want. All right, I'll come. <sighs> here we go. Ah, uh, we'll go. We'll go knock on his door. Uh, we'll try to go find his. his we'll try to find his living quarters and. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll come with you as well. You should stay here. We're gonna go knock on his door. Please go beneath the. We're gonna try to find his living quarters. You should. You should stay here along with Tack. You okay. uh, stay with Tack uh, and Barnabas, Queenie, and Scrim. You are the one. I'm staying. Yeah, I, whoever wants to come is fine. I'm you, staying with Yornir because Yornir is Grimnir, and oh, also that's a good point. and Tyshen is fully hidden that he's actually a golden dragon. That's a good point yeah. too. So we don't we don't can't let anyone we'll see their faces. Their no. And Tack will not be helpful. That's a good us. point. Okay. So the three of us who don't have to like desperately hide, uh, will go. You start to uh, you open the door and uh, you make your way down the hall uh, to the stairs and you start to make your way and you are about a quarter, maybe a third of the way down the stairs when you hear uh, voices. It's it's ten, eleven at night uh, and you can hear the murmur of the room, the uh, people who are uh, wrapping up dinner, uh, enjoying the last remnants of their drinks, that sort of thing, just engaged in casual conversation. But you're close enough to the front entrance that you can hear the voice of Nimrodel. Um, I would walk up to him and say, Nimrodel. Before you reach Hello. Nimrodel, you hear him say, no, 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 uh, no, no one of that description. I mean, oh, as soon as I hear that, I'm like, I would like back up and like put my arm to like, uh, uh, the, the, I'm just completely blank, 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 blank Barnabas and Queenie's names. Mm -hmm. Um, and basically Barnabas like, Queenie. no, 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 I haven't seen anyone that matches those descriptions. <clears throat> I see. All of that, then. And they had an ogre with them, you say? I see. I, I, I'm afraid I can't be of any help. I, 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 I'll be sure to alert uh, one of the frost hammers if I see anyone. Very good. Uh, good night. And he closes the door and uh, turns, and you can hear him sort of stop at the uh, the front podium, sort of uh, uh, doing whatever uh, business he needs to do. And you have a sense that if you wanted to go out now before he started attending to the other patrons, you'd be able to. I would, like, poke my, like, just my face ever so slightly around the corner and be like, Psst! Psst! Uh, hey! Of course, yes. And he, he gets up, walks over. Uh, do you need more snacks? No. Anything I can do no. for you at all? Nim Nimrodel. I feel bad now. I owe you an apology. I owe you, you, we, you all, are, we all No, do. you've done wrong. They haven't wronged me in the least, no. We've, that you're aware of. <laughs> we've, we've been rather rude and cold. I they were calling you a soup pervert. Oh, <laughs> did <laughs> <laughs> we all called you a soup pervert, and it was completely unwarranted. Why? <laughs> we're mature. We're mean. It, we we we're we just, weary from the travel. We haven't learned. Who the we're hell weird. puts beef beans in dynamite beef? <laughs> travel delirium. We don't have any beef. I was trying to be as accommodating as I could. Who calls a meatless? Soup, a stew. If it was not appreciated, then I. No, it was no, great. It was really, actually delicious. We're sorry. No, no, it was really good. We saw. We heard no, what I you did for us. Hear it. Just now, voice. we heard what you did for us just now, and we can. We can't. There's nothing we can do to repay you. You've you've helped us out, and and, you know, I came here to ask you some questions because I'm having a hard time, and I I we heard we overheard what you did for us, and 
He We're looks extremely at his, grateful. He looks at those eating, and he says, uh, let's uh, 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 quiet ourselves upstairs for a moment, and just, just very quickly. Oh, yeah. Sure. There's a lot of rumors uh, all around town about a gang of individuals who crashed a sledge into a tavern. Yep. Yeah, it was uh, an accident. That they had gold. Well, that's had. not, yeah, that's not really true that anymore. That they had an ogre that was supposed to be there under the mountain. Guarding, guarding against the trolls. That's him. I'm not here to ask any questions, but it seems that you are in the need of assistance. In all <clears throat> reality, we are just passing through. And we think we might have been led to this inn by divine prophecy. You see, Scrim had a dream. We don't know if it's true or not, but we believe in these kinds of things. And you seem like the type that might believe in this kind of stuff too. Scrim, go ahead and take it away. Oi. Just wanted to learn a little bit more about your religion. Ever since you mentioned it to me, I, I've been a little off and I don't know why. It's, uh, it's a long history. Uh, we, we elves. Uh, we, uh, here on Drakkar, we, we, we aren't well suited to the ice and, and the snow, but making our way, eventually, uh, we became, unfortunately, uh, due to an encounter, well, to put it mildly, uh, cursed. Oh. And uh, to keep the curse at bay, we have our little worships and our little prayers and our little <coughs> blessings and... Uh, my way of of serving that greater purpose is running this in. So Doing my best to be uh, uh, the best servant I can so that I might petition the princess to finally allow me to pass on. Okay, let me, okay, one thing at a time. So all <laughs> the elves are cursed here. Our <laughs> entire lineage, yes. <laughs> Is this why you formed a cabal? It's, it's, uh, yes. It, 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 it's the name that we give ourselves, the Shadow Veil Cabal. <clears throat> you, oh, God. You are doing these, these, these acts of kindness to, to hold off the curse. Does it help? No, 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 no. And we, oh. we don't, we don't do, we don't all do acts of kindness. <laughs> well, you see, you see yeah. it, it is a, it is a, you have to understand, I'm very old. I am going to turn 30 next year. 30? Like three zero? Oh yes. Yes. 30, can you believe it? Is I, I want to die. <laughs> oh, isn't that quite young for an elf? If we were allowed to just live on, it could be centuries of life, yes. But the, the, explain. 30 is not that old. Yeah, 30 I, is like, is the Even new, in human yeah. years, 30 ain't that 30 old. 30 is like, 17, just normally, like you're you're barely an adult. For us, 30 years old. We try to gift our years to Gehenna, to that who, who lower is she, plane. Who, who is Gehenna? It is a place, oh. it is a realm, a plane, a domain. It is an evil place. Oh, but what does it look if like? we failed to continue gifting our many centuries of life to sustain it in whatever purpose it chose to curse us with, we would all pass into oblivion. So you, you are you are like quite literally giving your time to this place it is and a sacrifice. it shortens your life. It is a sacrifice I make gladly. And I am hoping to do the most good I can it is my bucket list, the way that I will celebrate this life, as short as it is. All right, and then the last question is, you need permission to pass on from the princess. Well, you see, the method of our departure involves a bit of nasty business, and unfortunately, the princess holds the keys. Okay, all right, all right, what, what, what does that mean? Uh, are you sure you want to hear all of this? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure now, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, uh, the nature of our curse is uh, each of us is uh, stalked by uh, very shadowy hound-like figures. So, uh, actually, almost like a companion. And 
when it is time for us to move on, we are devoured. And we have killed our souls sent to this lower plane for whatever nefarious purpose it's... This, this plane of Ge Gehenna. Exactly right. <clears throat> how, how were you all cursed? Uh, you'd have to ask the elders. How old are they, like 44? Well, one is, I understand, close to a thousand. Oh, wow, so he, th that person just hasn't given up the... She lives her sacrifice to keep the knowledge, to keep the traditions passing down, like a grandfather or a grandmother or a great, great, I have no idea. All right, you know, I was gonna try to avoid it, but here we are. <laughs> I have a feeling that yours truly has the exact same curse. What makes you think that? It's, it seems impossible. It seems impossible? Yeah, we've never heard of anyone other than the elves here under Kar, the, the Shadow Veil. Vale no. Well, it's a big world out there, and sometimes dumb people do stupid things. What did you do? I signed a contract I couldn't read. Well, there's a little bit more to that as well, but I tricked a man out of a gold coin. He wasn't very happy about it. He more or less forced me under duress to sign the contract. <laughs> Which, to be fair, in a lot of places would make that thing null and void, but here we are. That doesn't line up with what I understand about our curse at all. Well, A gold I, coin? A gold coin. And I can tell you that I'm stalked. And I can't give the gold coin away, so don't get excited about the gold. I've tried. Every time I give the coin away, it comes right back. Well, the princess is not going to be very happy about that. Well, you know what? Neither am I. You know how many times I've spent that gold coin, though? It's the only good thing that's come out of this curse. Hmm. Do you need any more dynamite? Uh, no, beans? no, no. We no. don't need dynamite beans. What I need. What can I do for you, really? <sighs> more answers. Maybe to meet these elders. Maybe oh, to oh, oh, oh. learn a bit more about this place. Well, well, you, you should go to uh, the the. the well, it's a bit on the nose. The Cursed Glade, <laughs> the district just on the uh, uh, southeast. <clears throat> there, uh, you'd be able to find our people there and uh, do you learn as much as you like. Do you happen to have? A way you think, well, as you know, we are high profile in the city right now. Do you happen to know of any way we could safely travel around the city without being noticed? Perhaps. We, we're not trying to cause any trouble. We're just trying to make our way in Drakkar. And if there's a way where we could perhaps disguise our persons and appear as humble inhabitants of this great city that would make our lives much easier if there's any sort of magical relics or trinkets that might allow for some such effect. The solution is actually simple. You need to return the ogre. That is the Goliaths by right. The princess made them a gift. And that is her word as she says, but you can't, you can't, you the princess can't is the only one who could grant you safe passage. I know no other way. You can't uh, sneak or deceive. Uh, this can be a very violent city if you uh, don't know your way around. I mean, we, we can't give the ogre back. What we could do is perhaps chat with the princess if that seems to be in order, but we can parlay and we can work out some sort of arrangement. Would you uh, like me to facilitate? I feel a little strange calling upon the princess, but... If I, you uh, think you could. I, well, maybe we, maybe we should talk to Oi. Grimnar. Oh, yeah, that's right, Grimnar. should oh, yeah, know yeah. what to do Grim with Grimnar. his infinite wisdom. We should talk to our leader and find out if it's a good idea for us to be calling on the princess just yet. But if that's the route we wanted to go, we could beseech you to call upon her for us, potentially. Or I could uh, hide the ogre here while you go do whatever it is you need to do and find the princess that way. Or I could uh, uh, go and, and perhaps talk to my brethren and see if they have a solution. Uh, anything, anything at all to help, really. 
I think that that's a much better idea. If you could just keep our friend Tack nice and safe and sound and hidden, we can initiate a parlay ourselves and set the terms in a way that is not perhaps colored by the opinions or influences on you or your organization. It's a pretty so, big risk for me, but I could be perhaps a page of entries. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to ask this question, even though I already know the answer to this one. I'm guessing nobody's ever figured out a way to break the curse. If we had found out a way over thousands of years, we would have broken it. Thousands of years. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. Oh, you know, it does not. People like me are a bit strange. I don't know if you've noticed. But most, they try to in as few years as possible, do as many great things that they would want to do in their whole lives if they had those centuries. They have families, they get married, they do uh, great works of art, they, they, they spend those few precious moments, those tiny years in comparison to the true scope of what our lives should be, so that our tribe can live on. All right. We should go talk to the others. And uh, if you need any apples or carrots or anything at all, I have tea. Uh, I, I, I... You've done more than enough. We appreciate it. Uh, Gehenna's blessing. And he turns and he starts to make his way down the hallway. Um, and as he does, you see a, a figure stomping up the same stairs. And um, you see a human man start to pass him. They, they cross paths, but uh, he uh, uh, stumbles blind drunk past the three of you and opens a door across the way, finding him stumbling into his own room, seemingly, before... Do you recognize him? Yes, you recognize him as the same man that you first saw after well, crashing into the tavern as he help. stumbles into a room. a room and closes and locks the door behind him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The three of you make your way back, opening the door. Taishen, Yornir, Tank are all three there. How have you spent the time? If you have been doing anything that you want to at that time? Through the door, maybe while they were out there, you might overhear very f faintly that Don Knotts looking creepy voice having <laughs> old ass looking Spencer gives that a black light using <laughs> old ass soup pervert. <laughs> That's soup pervert. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Super pervert. Ooh, probably uh, tried to kill us. Uh, that's Evil. Funny. And then the door opens and you see your three <laughs> companions, allies, walk into the room. <sighs> you survived. How did it go? Yeah. Well, Nimrodell's actually a really nice guy. What? Yeah, really? no, I feel uh, we shouldn't nice. call him a suit pervert anymore. The pervert? He's no, don't call him that. We, oh. we put that upon we, him. It's not even true. We stumbled downstairs, and we saw him at the door. Someone had come a-looking for us, and he pretended like he had never seen us. He protected us, and ha he had no reason to. He could have gotten himself in a lot of trouble if he'd been found out. But he, he kept our cover. He's a he's a good guy. No, I don't understand. And he he's offered to to call the princess for us, set up a meeting if we wanted to. Uh, he he even offered to to house Tack for us and to keep him safe and protected, so we don't have to give him back. He he also apparently the Goliaths have been. Given the ogres by the princess, which is unthinkable. The Goliaths that I've known of believe in freedom and would never accept that. I, these people are strange. If we want to find Daisy and see where she may be, we will, will need to go into Giant Fist. The step. giant step. Giant step. The giant, the giant step. step district. It is better if the ogre stays here. Right. Also, all the elves, they're all cursed. Horrible curse. Same curse as me. 
That is a place. Lower plane. Is this the pl you told us about your experience getting transported, right? Yeah, but I don't know where it went. Is this the place that you were transported to? I don't know. I mean, where I went was awful. And he said that place was pretty awful. If I'm doomed to be hunted down and consumed, and then my soul sent to Gehenna, and that ogre thought he was sending me to Ogre Heaven, which we know isn't a real thing. Maybe I'm already claimed, and where I briefly went was... Gehenna. Did you ask him about the horrible vision that you saw? Of the legs? Ah, I didn't want to get into it. Well, this is fine. The point is, they're all cursed, there's no way to break it. They donate their years! They just want to die. Forever! They donate their, their life to Gehenna. The guy's only 30, he thinks that's ancient. They donate their lifespan. Yes. And they said there's an elder who's like a thousand years old, maybe. And she's like the keeper of the stories. It might be the only person who has any idea of any of this stuff. And they're the district before the giant step. So, I mean, if we gotta go all the way around anyway, well, we could stop and swing through. And and you could let them know we're coming. The, the good uh, people. To just give you a quick uh, orientation. This is the giant step. Southeast oh, is that where the savage. cursed blade is. <laughs> Damn it, it's not even close. <laughs> we should I go that here. One was giant I we promise to have a drawn map for you next time. I just. Time Either way. It's all. <sighs> well, it's not even close. So, I don't know. He offered to watch Tack. Tack will be safe. I'm going to pay him back anyway. Got to make up for all the awful things we said and all the stuff he did for us. But. I don't know how we're going to get all the way over to... He called it the... Accursed Glade. Ah, Like, we won't even go there. But they're all good people, and... They're just as screwed as I am. Well, the good news... Is that if they have not found a way to break the curse, perhaps you can be at ease. That there's not more you can be doing. It doesn't seem like there is. Come to terms. And if you do not choose to give the rest of your years, I wouldn't even know. there is no further curse. I wouldn't even know how to go about doing that. Well, and if there's an elder that's lived for thousands <coughs> of years, maybe it, it won't come for you before your, your natural time. Yeah, maybe. What a nightmare, huh? Okay. Yeah, it sucks. We need a plan. Giant step. Learn what has come of the vassals and the ogres. They could be an ally in our parlay if it turns to violence. Remember that the triad told us three paths, all of which could be our fate. We should keep an open mind to all of them. So under the cover of dark, I think we should go. I'll throw my hood up. We should move quickly. We must keep in mind that all of this happens with Secundus on his way. <sighs> That's a whole other nightmare. I will look a little bit like kind of distracted and sullen. I'll just nod as I'm kind of like fidgeting with the shell. I'll kind of be holding it in my hand and I'll just nod and say, hey, to the Goliaths. All right, I need five minutes before we go. As we're preparing, all right? Everybody get ready, give me five minutes. Yes. Um, and what I would like to do is find Take just a knife, a dagger, whatever, um, and maybe find some like spare cloth or whatever, and cut out, you know, a, 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 a large enough square where I could create like a makeshift like sack, mm -hmm. um, and uh, put twenty-five gold coins in it, and wrap it up tight, and make it look like it's just a you know a cloth wrapped up thing, um, and bind it with something, you know, and just keep it all together and 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 put that in my pocket separately. Okay. 
All right, I'm ready when you are. We should let Nimrodel leave. Uh, no, we're leaving mm. before we head out. Is there anything else we need to do before we go? Let's pack Mo. We are leaving. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know if we mentioned. He did mention that we're gonna have to return the ogre, and which obviously we're not okay with. But it's the princess's orders, and what she says goes. So there's a chance that we might not come back here. There's a chance that we don't see Tack again. We need to be prepared for that. Uh, I. I know we met him 12 hours ago. <laughs> Perhaps I, less. I feel but a I've grown fond with of him now. already. <laughs> what? I feel a kinship with him. He will be better off here, being helped by this generous soul than being thrown back in chains with the Goliaths. I just... We gotta make sure he's alright. You all feel a certain kinship with Tack, and it... Uh, feels, though you might not know it, in your heart you feel the weight of the ogre people in him, the symbolic representation of everything that you experienced in those people's lives that uh, you were suddenly thrust into and engaged with. In many ways, Tack is uh, a representation of everything that you experienced in your first true uh, settlement of Drakkar. And uh, with a heavy heart, you start to make your way out of, unless there's anything else you want to do. I would just want to tell Nimrodel that we're leaving and like make sure he knows that we're heading out um, and have just a moment to say goodbye. He uh, has two final customers that he is uh, uh, finishing and he gives you a hand before finally uh, finishing attending to theirs. He picks up a few plates and then uh, holding them still. Um, yes, we're gonna head out. Tax upstairs, he's asleep. Okay. Is there anything else we can do before we go? Uh, no, no, I, uh, uh, do you, um, uh, how, how can I take care of Tack? What should I tell him when he wakes up? Just let him know that we're, we're gonna go check things out. He's gotta stay quiet, he's gotta stay hidden, right? And, and hopefully we'll be back. You don't look like anyone else here in the city. You must not be found. Noted. And uh, I just wanted to thank you for everything and apologize again for the way that we treated you. It was wrong. And uh, whatever you do, don't let anyone find this. And I slip the 25 gold coins wrapped up in cloth into his pocket while his hands are full. I just put them in his pocket. Don't let anyone find them. Fuck. What, what, what is it? Open it later. Very good. Um. Wow. When you get to the giant step, uh, you'll f see uh, 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 a lot of barracks and, and halls, and, and uh, they, they, they are uh, a bad day for them as one that doesn't have spilled blood. They are fighters. Understand? Uh, I guess so. Are you... Uh, what, what will you do when you get there? We're looking for someone. If you know what you're looking for, then I won't get in your way. The humans that they brought from the ogre town. We understand that they were taken perhaps to the giant step before being moved elsewhere in the city. Only the ogres came. There were no more humans that came, that arrived. The only human I know is asleep upstairs in one of my smaller rooms. He doesn't earn very much as a poet. <laughs> <laughs> Would she have taken, if she had taken humans, she gifted ogres to the Goliaths, which she had gifted humans to someone else, I somewhere think, else. I think news travels quickly here in Argentholm. I, Imagine we would all know if another group of humans had arrived. But, perhaps. What about, does anyone ever see her, her hoard, where she has all of her gold, where she would take anything that she has? 
Only uh, those special kobolds, the Ivory Clutch. Uh, they live in the uh, Biting Bastion, all alone with her. What is it? The Biting Bastion. It is not a place for guests. There's a, a, an assembly yard where we occasionally come together as a city. And she has her way with words, but no, no, no one's seen her hoard. I imagine that she is still trying to gather as much gold as she can. Is there anything other than gold that she values as highly or higher? She would tell you the defense of Drakkar. She would tell you that she only cares about this land and that she is trying to unite us, all of us, together here and across the whole continent, north, south, east, and west, to uh, ready for some coming threat. All right. This is useful, thank you. We should not waste any more time. Let us go. Thank you. Again. I can prepare some dynamite, jackfruit. No, 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 please, no. Unnecessary. You've done plenty. Very good. I'll, uh, get his blessing. Uh, He turns and he starts to make his way back to the kitchen with the emptied plates. And, uh, uh, no sound emerges from his pocket as he disappears from view. You uh, walk out and the cold uh, blowing wind and snow hits you, uh, no longer in the warmth of the lively, not lively, but um, running tavern uh, and inn. You walk out and uh, the street is effectively empty. Uh, Looking up and down, you can see that uh, you might have to dodge a few (coughs) body or two, but you can, um, you would, as long as you keep your eyes open, be able to see a figure coming from any, uh, almost any distance, uh, now that it is a clear night with only a few small uh, flecks of snow drifting through the, uh, the air, seemingly blown up from the wind. I would, I think, just turn and start to head towards where I think the giant uh, step is now that the, str- the streets and alleys are clear with my hood up and sort of low. Uh, you know... If we can look like five little supers <laughs> <laughs> with trench coats. It turns out we <laughs> were the supers <laughs> all along. Slinging through the streets. You, you, endeavor to, in a pot. you endeavor to all hide your forms as much as possible with what you have on you. You're prepared for it inside, and you start to make your way north. Uh, that's where we'll take a very quick break, I think. Okay. The five of you, um, disguised as best you can, are uh, uh, walking, and you see your footsteps uh, in the snow on the um, sort of almost cobblestone. Uh, it's it's not quite cobblestone. It doesn't have that same rounded texture, but the streets here have been worn by centuries of footfall, it seems. So it's a very smooth path. And uh, uh, avoiding the ice as much as you can, uh, you start to make your way down uh, through the streets. And uh, you realize uh, pretty quickly that if you follow the main streets, it could be a pretty direct path to uh, a way up. Uh, the Giant's Step uh, being a district uh, that seems to be a, 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 a higher ele- elevation than the marketplace, or at least where you're coming from in the mi- marketplace, as close to the lake as you were. And very quickly, the cold air and the breeze blows away that smell uh, that pervades this lower neighborhood, uh, the sort of poor uh, marketplace. And um, you see a few figures start to approach, and you realize very quickly that uh, these are uh, frost-hammered kobolds, mm. and uh, they are walking directly in your direction. They don't seem to have noticed you just yet. What are you all doing? 
Uh, I think as soon as we see someone, we would duck into an alley and try to cut yeah. and like take a different path. Yeah. Just um, trying to be as like stealthy as possible, mm. basically, but not looking like we're fucking Scooby Doo creeping yeah, through. Yeah, trying to remain yeah. out of sight. Okay. Um, you uh, get to the next um, uh, small alley and you you turn and duck in. Uh, it is fortunate that the kobolds are on the other side of the street, um, missing your footsteps in the snow, or perhaps observing them and not making any, uh, taking any uh, care. Uh, but they walk by and you have a few hushed moments of silence and tension as you continue to make your way, eventually waiting for them to pass. Once they are out of sight, you get back onto the, onto the street. And there is a shift, a change in uh, what was uh, uh, these much older buildings to a district that seems to have been remade remade in the image of these uh, 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 tribesmen. Instead of uh, these um, larger, more traditional uh, housing, uh, you see um, huge, um, what are they called? Like watchtowers, almost. Uh, there, there are towers that seem to dot along all, all, all up and down uh, this this district. You can see that there are walls. You can uh, uh, that surround buildings. There, uh, uh, this this district seems very much to be a reflection of the Goliath's temperament, and they have remade it in their own uh, with their own people, their own culture in mind. Um, as you start to approach, you realize. There are only main streets, thoroughfares that walk, that go into this space. There are no alleys. It looks like you would have to either uh, send a wall in order to perhaps escape uh, a, uh, a detection, or approach what are very clearly uh, Goliath sentries. Mm. Ah, no, this is a dead end. Are we stuck? Can you get us through? I could, could try. But then are we trapped? We're not getting out? It will not be as easy as the last time. We gotta make sure we really want to go in there before we do, because there may not be any turning around. I can get us through. Louis, this is where we are going, and we, we mean to find the survivors from Ogerton. There's only one path forward. There's no turning back now. You'll see me shift. My height really won't change, but I'll go from blue to gray, and I will take that same grim near appearance. Okay. Uh, with the aggressive scar and tattoos. You all watch as his features shift and morph and reshape, and uh, in almost a blink of an eye, Grimnir stands before you. Just look grim and determined. Okay. Okay. Easy. Hail! As I approach the sentries. You walk up and uh, they are, um, they had been standing alert, but uh, you hear uh, the callback to, uh, and response. Who, who goes there? My name is Grimnir the Pilgrim. I have come from far off lands to offer my services to the princess. You come from uh, homeland. Uh, many years ago, yes. But it has been centuries since I have returned. You have not been with tribe this whole time? Yes, I have been wandering. I've been blessed with the gift of second sight and a naturally long life. And they call me Grimnir, the pilgrim. They both sort of look at each other in confusion. And your companions? They are my companions from far off lands. As it is hopefully evident to you. Step closer into the torchlight. Uh, and this would have all been in giant, by the way. So I don't yeah. know if they're responding in kind. Uh, yes, they are responding in giant. If you'd, if you'd said hail in giant, then they would yeah. have been speaking to you in their nat native tongue. And then in common, I'll switch. Let us approach. I would, I would listen to you when you're in mm. fall. 
the four of you walk, follow Yornir, uh, Grimnir up to the two um, uh, up to the two sentries standing there. I am, we... Gorf- I am Garvax. This is Thorval. What brings you so late at night? We have important business that we must attend to. I cannot elaborate any further. And if you must know, as a powerful sorcerer, my strength is greatest at night. When the moon is high in the sky. It is just a few days to uh, half moon. And the uh, night is high in the sky. Uh, uh, shedding its light down uh, uh, through the occasional cloud that drifts overhead. Uh, The sky is filled with brilliant stars. And they look at the sky and they look at you. Sorcery. Magic. There are rumors spreading around the city of this a group of foreigners who have come to the city. Are you then? Uh, We have only just arrived. It is unlikely that word of our arrival has spread. There are many travelers across the land of Drakkar. How Uh, did you come into the city? Not through the marketplace, I think. I told you that I have great sorcery. Do you think I need paths or tunnels to get into this land? To enter this city? One wave of my staff and I can bring my party wherever I need. Make an intimidation check. That's exactly the right call, Derek. Very wonderful. Right? Yes, we don't what's, your, what's, your, what's your current plus? There's zero. No it's probably it's zero. charisma. Uh, yeah. Damn. Um, five. Plus five. Yeah, least, plus five. Yeah, five. plus five. Yeah, plus five. Yeah, five. Plus five. That's advantage. Five is reasonable. Yeah. I, think I feel really good about this roll. Five twists. Thank you, chat. We're going to run out of twists very quickly. Natural fucking 20. Oh! Let's fucking go! Grand total of 25. 25. The air crackles around <laughs> your ear, room near. Gorvax turns to Tharbal and they look at each other and uh, warriors as fierce as this, no muscle, but it is the uh, insinuation of the powerful magics that you wield that causes them to hesitate. Fumbling with his horn on one side, he releases it and grips the end of a, a great battle axe instead. Just out of a just in case maneuver. And what are you here for the giants? What brings you to our tribe? As I mentioned before, there is business that we are on in the various districts of the city that we cannot elaborate upon. And if you wish to avoid the princess's wrath, I suggest you let us through. He leans over and whispers, for a moment into Thorvald's ear, and he turns and whispers back. You could be bringing danger. You could be bringing violence. You could be bringing death. You could be bringing assassination. We cannot trust you to walk alone. As a proud Goliath, you fear violence, you fear death, you fear danger. What kind of Goliath are you? I cut my own eye out to gain great sorcery, and you stand here guarding a gate with an axe? 
we would not leave our tribe unprotected. We would... We cannot let you pass. We will follow. This is fine. As long as you let us in. He makes a gesture and the two sort of step to the side and you can see this long, these extremely wide, much wider than the paths in the marketplace to accommodate uh, their great size and uh, their need for open space. And uh, you, torches light the way. Uh, if you know where you are going, then go. Oh, touche. Uh, I will say in common, let us proceed. Where? Where are we planning to go specifically? Uh, I think we would be um, we would be looking for wherever the ogres are uh, being held, or where they're located. I can't help. Um, move aside. You may enter. And I'll start walking, like doing that Gandalf walk with purpose, you know what yep. I mean? Like sort of speed walking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to just start walking into the uh, district like I know where I'm going with purpose. They give you a berth of about 50 feet before you feel that they are starting to walk behind you and follow you into the giant step. And uh, walking past the buildings, you can see that many of them are uh, here for forging weapons. Uh, there are many eateries, cafeterias almost, for uh, uh, these groups to assemble and uh, talk after training. And there is indeed uh, uh, training grounds, wide open spaces where you can imagine during the day would be filled with the sounds of clashing metal and Damn. the uh, sounds of sweat. Um, as they uh, undergo whatever harsh training a Goliath like this, uh, a tribe like this, would see fit for its own. Um, walking uh, deeper, uh, make a perception check for me. Mm. Uh, 21. Nice. 21. Uh, it doesn't take you very uh, long for you to figure out that you are on one of the spokes of a hub. This district is almost like a uh, large circle with a number of paths that lead to a central uh, uh, building, and that very likely you are headed uh, directly towards uh, the uh, center of governance or authority in this particular district. Um, as I walk through, I would say, do not delay. Let us keep up. Uh, and I am going to, with trying to sort of almost make a show of it, mm. they'll see, if they're behind me they'll and it's dark, they'll see from my hood like a blue glow sort of expand and then reduce um, as my eye glows and I cast Locate Creature. <gasps> uh, Badass. For the next hour... Uh, within a thousand feet, I am looking for a named person or a, the closest uh, type of creature to that person. So I'm looking for Manius mm -hmm. uh, or oh, shit. an ogre of any kind. Uh, believe. Let me just tell you exactly how it's worded. Uh, uh, the spell can locate a specific creature known to you or the nearest creature of a specific kind. So basically, that creature or... What's the duration? Uh, an hour. An hour. Um... And picking up what you're putting down, I uh, as soon as you're like your sorcery flashes, I'll probably like I mostly was like this hooded figure. You hear <laughs> as like the crab legs will like scuttle out from under my robe as I'm trying. I'll like I'll, I'll use an, a charge of rage to like have a crab claw kind of snap out like I'm some like chaos mutant okay. uh, that, that that has been has been mutated by Grimnir you as I'm, as one of these strange mysterious other foreign foreign entities. Scrim, uh, Taishan, Queenie, what are you doing in these moments now that you've crossed the threshold into this district? I, I would very much be trying to just follow Yornir in a way that is very, like, clear that I work for him, right? Okay. Like, you know, like subservience almost, right? Like, whether I'm at his side trying to act like I'm, you know, helping him or ready to assist him, it would very much be like, uh, I'm not, I don't spoke unless spoken to, I'm speaking unless spoken to, 
and try to look like, you know, I'm in awe and fear of this this man. Um okay, sure. Uh, I would be following Yornir closely as well, and as we, in, like, very much the night, uh, as we approach any type of, like, torchlight, and I'd be, I'd be pulled up also, like, hooded, uh, I'd be trying very hard to not let any of the light hit my scales, uh, mm. and as we approach any form of torchlight, I would be very carefully and subtly manipulating the edge of the flame to not reach out and uh, and end right before it touches. This me. creates a slight effect where, as you are walking, there's almost a darkening around mm -hmm. the five of you. And the as flames you are, are afraid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. The flames tremble in our way. Okay. These guys are gonna need serious therapy. Yeah, let's fucking go. Uh, I will <laughs> send the bees ahead of us, almost as kind of like a. Um, like almost like a red carpet. They just kind of like light the way, just following along with where Yornir's looking and seeing what he's doing, to figure out where they need to go. So it almost looks as if I am helping to keep his path clear for him. These effects all combine and you glance behind you to keep uh, tabs on the following guards. And you see not two figures now, but five. They uh, seemingly are sort of <laughs> doing this to other sentries that you're passing along the way as you're walking farther and farther down the street and now uh, uh, whispering uh, to uh, uh, more and more guards as they are watching these strange magics unfurl and they're uh, uh, their steps slow and then sort of catch back up. Uh, you can feel the fear in these Goliath's hearts as you look back and they are endeavoring to uh, pump up their numbers. You get another 15 minutes, 20 minutes forward before you locate Creature. You suddenly feel that not directly ahead of you, but just to the side, there is a building or some kind of uh, uh, encampment where you would be able to find Manny, specifically. Holy shit. Uh, without a word, I'll just continue on and I'll head to that building. With a preternatural sense of where to go, um, and you almost sense in your near that shift where you were walking straight, and all of a sudden it's like th the pace already fast doubles, and uh, you start to, to turn, and uh, you make your way uh, uh, around a few buildings before eventually um, seeing this large, huge, uh, uh, almost um, uh, domed uh, building uh, that is the at, at the center of this. Uh, district, um, you uh, see a, a structure. It almost looks like a uh, large barn. Uh, it has two huge open uh, en entrances to it, and um, you start to walk directly towards it. You know you're near as you approach this massive building, this huge structure that this that Manius is, is within. But you're struck by the fact that you don't see just Manny when you walk in through the doors. The torchlight illuminates, and you can see hundreds of ogres are within this space. They are all almost in pens, waiting, sleeping, uh, 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 just uh, uh, almost like cattle in this large uh, space. Not in a dormitory or something along those lines, but clearly uh, being treated as lesser. And you know that at the very far end, past these ogres on either side, is Manny. Um, as we walk into the barn, I will ha f bring everyone uh, inside. And if they've been trailing us like a far ways back. I would say they're now like 75 feet back, but there are uh, a dozen of them having spent so much time walking and them pulling more and more uh, to their ranks. Are there any more, uh, are there any Goliaths inside this barn? No. I will just shut the door and bar it if I can or lock it uh, oh behind us. Uh, as soon as they realize what you're doing, you see their um, pa uh, uh, pace pick up uh, to a jog, but uh, you are all inside and you watch Yornir closing one door and it does not take mu very much for the other four of you to help and slam it closed. There doesn't appear to be any interior locking mechanism, but you are able to uh, uh, close it. It's not like there's one of those beams that can uh, land in one of the uh, holders or anything along those lines, but um, you close it and you feel it click. All right. 
And at, th- at this point, I'm presumably I don't I'm not disguised. Yeah. So I, I look, look, look like a fear bog. All right. So we need to either get out of here unseen, or try to lose them, or unleash the ogres on these Goliaths. We say we unleash all the ogres on them. If we do that, we're putting their lives at risk. They might be injured or wounded, or uh, certainly killed. Uh, we can do it, and, and we can definitely escape in the chaos, but what are we going to do then? Then what? What would the princess's response be then as well? What and if she gave them as a gift, and if they... They get out of line, she just swoops in and thinks they're not worth the concern. And we have no reason to believe that the ogres are going to attack and fight. They could... They could They could cower and be afraid. I mean, think about how how Tack is. He doesn't, he doesn't always resort to violence. He's a gentle soul. And they could just barge in here and just slaughter him. All because we unlocked their cages. Barnabas, keep an eye on the door, make sure no one gets through. If anyone tries to get through, they're going to get an anchor into their fucking skull. Uh, I'm very clearly, like, extremely enraged, and, like, my veins are bulging. My skin is kind of, like, shifting underneath and, like, and and gyrating. Uh, and I'm doing everything I can to, to, uh, to keep my calm the best I can. And I will walk across the barn to uh, where Manny is. Manny, it is good to see you. You're near? Yes, it is us. Uh, what what happened? Where are the others? Where are the humans? Your near is back. Yes. What happened to you? We were taken away, but we are back now. Is is where 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 did the the, 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 the the vassals? Where did they go? Where are they? In Princess's house. Is this where all... How many ogres are left? Is this all of you? Are there more? A few dozen went... A few dozen? A few (laughs) dozen went to other tribes, but most are here. And they are keeping you in these pens? Yes. Are you happy here? Do you want to leave? Not very comfortable. We could let you out. Would you like to be let out? Would you fight for your freedom? Yes. Then I say we call the princess here right now. Let us claim the freedom of these ogres and we as all tribesmen of them to be held up equally at the right hand of this princess of wrath. And we can demand a trial by battle, and we will slay anyone who gets in our way. She will respect that, I, I know, we saw it. She will respect a show of might, a show of strength. Let us join forces with all of these souls. Start releasing them. Do we have, like, uh, from the outside, is it openable, or would we have to, like, break them out somehow? Oh, um, it seems that the ogres, it's not like they're in cages, right? right? It, they're in, like, the equivalent of, like... Like uh, stalls. Hay, stables. Stall, yeah, stables, yeah. like stalls, right? And so it, it, they they hadn't taken the time to open and try to escape. They, they'd just been told that they were sl- going to sleep here and, and are sleeping here. Uh, no, I love <laughs> oh, oh, Poor bastards. <laughs> um, they, uh, you do notice, uh, and I think all of you would notice this, that um, they have uh, uh, cuts, bruises um, from some kind of injuries. Right. I will look around to see if anything in this area has like heavy things that could be used as clubs. Or spiked like makeshift clubs, makeshift sledges. Uh, make an investigation check. <laughs> <laughs> For the ogres! That's pretty good. Oh! That's pretty good. Oh! Fucking go. oh! Investigation? Oh shit. Skills, 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 skills. 19. 
19. With a 19, you look at the walls and you're hoping for metal anything. You're looking around and you're looking for looking clubs, for wood, anything. I'm looking for But you uh, have a sudden solution appears to you as you look at the pens themselves. And these are not pens that have been uh, uh, with uh, you know, thin two by fours or anything along those lines. These are hammered together what clearly once were straight branches from massive pine trees. And even though uh, no medium creature would be able to wrap uh, their hand around the girth of each one of these logs, essentially, the uh, large uh, hand of an ogre would be able to wield such a thing as a weapon if you were to start pulling this uh, timber apart. As soon as I realize that my anchor will drop from the netting and I'll pull it up and I will smash the pens. I'll attempt to basically smash it to pieces as I will try to basically dismember all of the logs, break apart, and I will attempt to start doing that. It'll take me some time, I presume. All right, it looks like we're doing this. Open all of the pens. Okay. All right, my friends, my crew, all survivors of Ogreton, all you have to do is claim the freedom yourselves, grab these logs, find any metal you can, Pick them up, wheel them, and use your strengths, and it's quite simple. You smash them with a the heavy end. And I'm going to try to basically smash apart all of the pens, find the lumber, and start passing things out to every single ogre that's there. And anyone who doesn't understand how to use it, I will show them with my <laughs> anchor and anything else, and just like, show them how to swing, and how to basically, any like, kind of like ogre. Like Goliath, yes. They are uh, uh, clearly if they they uh, uh, you're, when you make these motions, some of them almost seem like, oh yeah, no, we've been doing this for weeks, uh, and the um, uh, uh, some are, are wiping the sleep from their eyes, but immediately uh, your rousing voice uh, is getting them to their feet, and very quickly you're all standing looking at the uh, the towering army of ogres that you uh, is now in your contingent as Manius uh, uh, looks uh, to each of you. We go from town, from city, we leave. Brought here we were. You do not belong in these pens. Do you remember what I taught you about the triad? Yes. About Hanum, Od, and Nendrakar. We are going to fight for ogre man and the land. You don't have to um, uh, wait for an answer. Behind Manny it, uh, is carved into his pen's wall, the symbol that you taught him. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I will, as I see, as I'm done hand, uh, handing out all of the, the, the things or helping however I can, I'll have my uh, my anchor and I'll grip it very tightly looking at the door and I'll just kind of uh, say to myself, Are you here, my love? That's what you would do. We will fight! And I am going to basically look at your near and basically wait for like the go ahead to basically smash the doors open and like demand a parlay. Are they? Or allow you are to they trying to get in? Like like are are the? Do we feel like they're just sort of waiting for us to do our business? You haven't heard anything since you closed the doors. You haven't heard a horn blow, and there's been more than enough time for the Goliath and a jog to have reached the doors and and entered. Is there a window we can look out of, like near the doors or anything? Any way to see outside? Uh, yeah, you'd be able to make your way up some of the ladders and look down from the um, uh, the, the sort of like top areas. There aren't any windows on this particular uh, floor, just like a stable. I think I would have gone to a window while Barnabas is like cracking like wood and you like, building a handle over ship. hand. You make your way up, and as you're hearing <laughs> Barnabas uh, uh, essentially equipping this. Uh, 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 Platoon, uh, you uh, are hearing Yornier's voice talking to Manny and, and, and getting a sense of understanding of, of what's been happening mm -hmm. in the months that uh, have passed since you last saw him. And uh, you uh, walk up. What are the two of you doing as this uh, uh, unfolds? I would have just been following, uh, you know, directions from Barnabas and Yornier at this point, like uh, trying to roust the ogres that might have been asleep and, and open up the, the, the pens and basically be like, okay, go to Barnabas, get your standard issue weapon, go ahead, go to his, we'll show you what to do, go ahead, come on, go up this way, this way, yep, yep, come on, you too, come on. And like basically trying to uh, just roust them and, and point them in the direction of where Barnabas is, is rallying people. Okay, you are doing that. Uh, Queenie would be helping Barnabas um, as he 
would pry like one of the the clubs out um the bees would grab it and deliver it oh, to an ogre so yeah. that way barnabas doesn't have to keep moving too and much and can just keep crying as yeah. long as your swarm is belt. now yeah. you um uh, uh you're breaking them apart uh like popsicle sticks just immediately mm. the, the swarm can go in and take what would normally be like uh 15 or so of these logs and they just splinter uh into perfect uh clubs and they each one go to uh to a barnabas or to an ogre when you reach the top, Taishan, you uh, uh, peek over the side and you see hundreds of torches. <gasps> there are an assembly uh, of, uh, clearly the Goliaths have been doing the same work, waking their breath, brothers, their sisters, and you're looking down at hundreds of shining bald heads uh, that have assembled outside of uh, the main building and into the into the street, uh, going into alleys, uh, uh, clearly waiting for something. Um, but they are all standing there, each one of them equipped with a metal weapon at hand. Some of them a brutal mace, others uh, uh, swords, uh, spears of all shapes and sizes, uh, halberds and battle axes. Everybody, we're gonna have one heck of a fight on our hands. There's a, there's hundreds of them out there. They're massing right outside the gate. Oh, you let them come. May not turn to bloodshed yet, but if it does, we will die well. Um, once I feel like all of the ogres are armed and free, I would. Uh, walk up and I would have Manius stand beside me and I'll turn to Barnabas I'll say you may open the doors hi Mr. Grimnir and with one massive swing of my anchor I'd be to splinter the doors open um, make an attack roll Imagine I got a natural one here. <laughs> if my, oh, can, you get my, can you attack recklessly just for free? I can, yeah, I can. Oh! oh! Don't even do two. Natural 20, folks. The dice tell the story, folks. I'm Natural 20, you. folks. You gotta trust the dice. Um, Unbelievable. Off of its hinges, both of these uh, uh, f uh, f fly out like playing cards. They simply flap out, and uh, they nearly reach the assembled crowd that had just been uh, standing outside of the door. A few of the Goliaths have to step back in order to get out of the way of the fragmented wreckage of these doors as they splinter into the snowy ground. You see, all of you on the bottom floor, the faces of all of these Goliaths uh, uh, looking... Um, um, a curious, furious, uh, full of uh, uh, energy, uh, uh, warlike energy. And Taishan, just as you see the doors get blown off and into the street, you see a part, uh, uh, almost like a, a dark bulb, start to make its way as uh, the tor torches start to part and re and reclose as some figure continues to make its way uh, towards the front line. And out walks very clearly, the, one of the larger Goliaths. He is, uh, uh, has a, a huge shoulder, uh, uh, ar 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 a piece of armor on one side, a battle axe that is uh, twice the size of any other, and uh, uh, clearly has a tremendous number of scars over uh, his, uh, his chest. And he looks up, he is also missing an eye. And he uh, <laughs> stares out and into the, uh, uh, towards the barn, and you hear him cry out, in there, you! You will... I'm not gonna... Hold on. Come out, you cowards! Come out and fight if you want to! We will take you down and kill all of you! Kolovac, the Unbroken, challenges you to this fight. Uh, I will walk out of the barn. Uh, hopefully with Manius beside me. I don't know how close they are, but uh, I will now just be my, my hood's down. I am my full fear bulk self. I'm walking out there with My you. eye is glowing. Only him steps forward to meet you uh, at the halfway point. <sighs> I am Grimnir, the pilgrim, prophet of Drakkar. We are the defenders of this land. And you will step aside. Magic or no, you have tried to take from us. 
You are trying to take what is rightfully ours. These ogres are not rightfully yours. They are part of our tribe. I claim the responsibility for them. I train them to fight, to be like the other Goliaths. I will be fuming with rage, and I will move to step in between Grimnir and this Goliath. As I'm probably shorter than than this Goliath. He he and matches your near height. Yeah. I'm looking up and I will I'll scan the crowd and look back at him and say We demand a parlay with the Princess of Ra. They are not part of your tribe. We are the tribe of Ogerton, and we demand equal place in this horde of wrath that she has called forth here. <laughs> so be it. He reaches down and pulls his own horn out. <laughs> 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 we wait, and we will see what the princess has to say about her own decision to grant us these lives. And he spits on the ground and turns, and there's that we shall. an unsettling amount of time, not knowing what to look at or what to expect. I'll uh, step forward and stand next to Barnabas, and I'm clearly taller than this ogre. So I'll look down at him. That's all. Okay. <laughs> uh, the ogres have sort of rushed to the door and are, are waiting for any motion from you. Uh, but there's this terrible still quiet. Uh, only the sound of the flickering torches and the shuffle of feet as uh, this standoff between you and this wall of Goliath continues to progress. 10, 15 minutes. Do you do anything with this time? I'll give everybody uh, else a chance, but... Uh. I will... As I scan the crowd, do I see any female Goliaths? Yes. Does anything... Would anything kind of spark any kind of memory? Not necessarily someone that looks familiar, but perhaps remind anything from my... Make a um, history check at advantage. Interesting. Oh. Interesting. 13. That'll be a 14. 14. Um, you're looking into these eyes and uh, only seeing uh, fear and distrust and hate. And it's those emotions, those negative emotions, looking into their faces that uh, tickles something in the back of your mind, but the door does not open. Oh, what does it mean? I will, I will just simply nod uh, to myself as I, as I sit and I wait, and still angry, still tense, but a slight calm has come over me. I know you are with me, my love. Stand aside. We will not parlay here in a barn. We, we will go to her own keep. We will not let you go. And with this horn, she is already on her way. And she points up, and you can see the half moon uh, floating in the sky, these thin trails of, of clouds uh, uh, just in front of it, and you see this massive winged creature sail over them and down and around. You are watching, and uh, uh, it is impossible to make out any of these features. You only see the predatory uh, silhouette of the creature that you have come to know as the Princess of Wrath, and she starts to dive bomb directly towards the street that you find yourself on at an impossible speed, a speed that feels insane to you. And just as you think that she is about to collide, her wingspan opens out uh, to slow her uh, speed, and she transforms just 30 feet above the ground into a humanoid creature, a human, platinum blonde hair. She lands in the ground in front of you, between you and the Goliaths. 
massive, uh, tall frame, uh, uh, lithe, uh, muscular, almost as though she's been chiseled from ice. And with her back to you, she looks at uh, uh, the, the, the war chief. She starts to turn, and you see her cold, pale blue eyes look upon you. Uh, cold, pale blue lips, her beautiful features as she turns and takes you in. And that is where we'll call tonight's session. But we're not done. Oh! First of all, you are all level nine. Oh! Yeah. We finally remember to say what it on the stream. Hell? Hey! <laughs> oh no, she's hot! <laughs> oh my god. Level nine! God. And we're, the story is going to continue for a moment. That's the end of tonight's session, but the story is going to continue. Oh, jeez. What does it mean? Me, me, me. <laughs> Shit. Did we long rest? Yeah, we yeah. Yeah, 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 we did. Just for sure. Just check. No, that was a good check, because oh, I have also I didn't. Long rest. Yeah, you're right. But I just said something. In the cold embrace of Drakkar's wilderness, Sigdis lived a life marked by the unrelenting cadence of survival. The human Norveld tribe, her people, carved their existence from the frozen earth, their days a testament to endurance against the harsh realm, the hungry beasts that prowl in the dark, and their isolated existence. Sigvis, with plain features, auburn hair, and caring eyes, was like any other in her tribe. Since childhood, her presence among the Norveld peoples had been as unremarkable as the snow underfoot. She grew, and her world rarely changed under the gray skies of Drakkar until the day that Costan entered her life. Costan had been born misshapen, his form a cruel jest of nature. His appearance, so grotesquely exaggerated, earned him the scornful moniker of giant, an insult that cut deeper each time it was uttered, for the giants were despised enemies of the Norveld. It became a constant reminder of his otherness, fueling a bitterness that no warmth could thaw. Sigdis heard the whispers, saw the disdain in the eyes of her kinsmen. He was quick to anger, given the insult so frequently hurled his way, and Sigdis knew that despite his physical strength, he was viewed as a shame and a burden, even by his family. The first meeting was a stark reflection of the harsh realities of Drakkar. Sigdis found herself dangerously outmatched by a pack of dire wolves. It was Costan who emerged from the wilderness then. His monstrous strength was a spectacle of raw power and he dispatched the beasts with bloody efficiency. Sigdis watched, her heart caught between terror and awe as he stood defiant in the blood-stained snow. In that moment, a connection stirred between them, born of shared survival and unspoken understanding. Life in the tribe trudged onward slow and unyielding like the icy rivers of the land they lived on, until the day that Sigdis would become an unwilling participant in a tragedy that unfolded within Costan's family. Lured by the sounds of shouting and the mad light of growing flames, Sigdis found herself running to Costan's homestead. Costan's father, a man as large and as barbaric as the frozen wilderness itself, his gray hair a testament to his survival in a land that spared few, stood before their burning home, casting blame upon his wife and daughter. The building, it would seem, had caught a blaze from a careless, knocked-over bra brazier. Costan's father faulted his wife and daughter for the accident and commanded Costan to end both of their lives there and then. The rageful command to Costan was unthinkable, yet Costan had always been caught by the relentless grip of his father's will. Sigdis watched in shock as he carried out the deed with a heart as cold as ice. <sighs> Crushing the lives out of his mother and sister with a massive mining hammer pulled from the neighboring tool shed. The aftermath was a tragic tableau of blood and fire, the two bodies lying broken against the snow. Costan's resolve was shattered, and this time it was Sigdis who emerged from the wild. Her voice, barely more than a whisper, became the catalyst for his vengeance. Your father, she implored, he is the one. You have to, you have the strength. Free yourself from him. 
Her words ignited a rage within Costan that would persist evermore, easily dwarfing the blaze that consumed his home. Sigdis, her heart heavy with the weight of what was unfolding, watched the blur of motion and emotion as the two men clashed and fought. Their struggle was not brief, nearly caving in the adjacent shed, smearing it with their blood, splintering the wood in violence. When Costan finally slayed the embodiment of his torment, wrath found its voice. You made me do this, he roared. Again and again he brought the hammer down with anger and sorrow and release. He shouted the words again, You made me do this! Until his father's skull was but matted gray hair. Sigdis saw in Costan then, not a monster, but a man tormented by forces beyond his control, even himself. Their bond, forged by that fateful night, was a complex mingling of suffering and empathy. Their union was not celebrated with songs or with feasts, but by the intimidated whispers of the horrors that had transpired. Their wedding, a somber pact, would become a prelude not to a saga of romance or dreams, but one of mutual survival.